remain standing and bow our head. Lord Jesus, we are grateful to thee this morning for the privilege of coming into thy presence and thy house, where thy people are gathered in thy name. And all is thine, Lord. We commit ourselves to thee now for the expectation uh, we have in our hearts for a, a service for those who are without God and without Christ, that they'll be saved and the sick will be healed and the saints will be blessed. Granted, Lord. And then at the end, we will bow our heads in humility and give thee praise for all that you do through us this day. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Be seated. I'm indeed grateful for the privilege of being here again today and for uh, you people that's traveled so far to come for the message, uh, for the service this morning. I know you didn't come just to see or hear me. You come to meet the Lord Jesus. And uh, so I'm trusting that he will give to you the desire of your heart. Now, I'm, I'm back, come back, taking the family to Tucson and return. I'm, tired and wore out, <laughs> and I've um, been going all summer since last January, and now I've come to go down in Kentucky this week to go hunting with some friends to try to relax a little. It makes me nervous so much, you know, so I'm, Billy and I both are just about gone, so we, we pray that God will help us this week to relax. The Lord willing, I want to be back here again next Sunday, if the Lord willing. And I want a special service next Sunday. Uh, I want to do something a little different than ordinarily. Now, I, I give this out so that the people who might not be interested wouldn't have to come. But we always pray for the sick, Lord willing, when the people come. And next Sunday, I want to find out what's on all your hearts. Uh, I want you to write out today when you leave and lay it up on the desk, and Brother Neville will give them to Billy Paul and he to me. What's on your heart? Just say, if it's a Bible question, usually I have it that way. We'll open a little further now. Maybe there's some problem on your heart that, that you, you can't uh, get it through somehow. Like it's you got, uh, um, oh, maybe a domestic trouble. You don't have to sign your name to it, but just... My husband does so and so, and it hinders me. My wife does so and so, and uh, and or, or, there's a certain thing takes place in life, or or something, you know, just what's on your heart. Something is troubling you. I think that would be good to you. Then just find out there, and maybe you ask the question, and I might answer it for somebody else. See, they may have the same trouble, and just what's on your heart. Make it just as brief as possible, like. Uh, I have a child that seems to be going wrong. What must I do? Uh, I have a, a husband that won't come to church with me. He gets irrigant with me. What must I do? Or a wife the same way. Or, or, you know, the Bible says this in one place and this in another place. I don't understand it. Uh, these, um, I'd like to know what it means. And uh, should I, um, in the case of a Christian, I'm working at the office and the boss says such and such of things, and he asks me to go with him to a party, and in this party they drink. What should I do? See, just, you know, things like it's on the human mind. We want you to. And therefore, then I, I got to go back then after that to Arizona, and I thought I would get a chance to kindly 
uh, help you to understand, and best that I can, I'd like to have as many as I could put on the pulpit today before you leave. Just write it and lay it up here, and, and Brother Neville, or one of them, will give them to me. And this week down in the mountain, I'll have a, a pl- chance to study it and, and pray over it and get the scriptural answer for you to everything that I can to help you. For that's why we are assembled here, Amen. is to help one another. See? You help me as you pray for me, and I hope I can help you. Amen. Now, then uh, don't forget that'll be next Sunday morning. And uh, now, today we're our visitors with us as usually, and uh, how many is from over a hundred miles away? Raise your hand. That's ninety-nine percent of the congregation. A few Sundays ago, I said. How many is from so far away? Something I couldn't get no hands from Jeffersonville. <laughs> Next day I got it all. <laughs> they said, Brother Branham, all the visitors come in and said we just let them take our place in the church. So said they come hundreds come by and couldn't get in. Said because we seen the visitors. See now that's nice of the Jeffersonville people and around here. We we we're grateful for that Jeffersonville. And New Albany and the people around about, we're grateful for that. How many is from a thousand miles away? My. How many is from over a thousand away? Raise your hand. Oh, good. That's fine. That's there. Last Sunday is a week ago. I spoke on the subject the future home of the bride and groom, and I think we were from fifteen hundred square miles around. And it happened to be that is exactly the measure of the city I was speaking about. Fifteen hundred square miles. I've been feasting on that ever since, Amen. knowing that when this life is over, I'm going to that city. Hallelujah. I'm bound for that city, and uh, uh, nothing else matters. Amen. What if the sun doesn't shine today or tomorrow never comes? What difference does it make? Amen. We got a home, Amen. a resting place. Amen. Tired or not tired, we still have that resting place. You say, that's an old man's dream. No, it isn't. It isn't. It's the Bible truth. One night after speaking here, the man rushed around behind the platform here, the one out the door, was trying to get me out to the car, and this young fellow said, I want to say one word to you. Billy and some of the brethren trying to take me onto the car. He said, can I just say the one word? I said, say on, sir. And he said, you was talking tonight about balling them women out the way they were dressing, wearing them clothes. That a man of your age would think that, but if you're my age, you'd think different. And I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 27. And I said, I was 10, 15 years younger than you. I was preaching the same thing. Amen. It's what's in your heart, boy. Your eyes see through your heart. Amen. And uh, he just dropped his head and walked away. I guess there's no more answer to that. It depends on what's in here is what's going to come out through here and here. See? Yeah. Jesus said, if you say different from what's in here, then you become a hypocrite. I'm glad this morning somewhere in the congregation to have uh, a very precious friend of mine, brother, uh, Reverend uh, Eddie Biscoe, and his wife and children. I suppose they got into the meeting this morning. Eddie, are you here? I, I thought he, well, maybe he didn't get to come. Brother, oh, yes, Wade. Now, that's not the amen corner, Eddie. You're welcome up here on the platform with, our, with the ministers if you want to come. And then the, uh, we've been on. Brother Eddie was along when the Lord gave me the vision about the bear and the caribou. That, how many remembers that when I told you? All right. He was there. He was a young fellow had on the checkered shirt. <laughs> Brother Eddie Biscoe. And he stood there where an I. I asked them if they had a checkered shirt, any of them. Nope, no one had it. I said, well, my, it's got to be a checkered shirt. It's going to be a, a big silver tip grizzly and, a, and some kind of an animal. has got 42 inches over its horns like this. Looked like a deer. And uh, that was about six months, I said, year, you know, before it happened. Long about this, all earlier in this year. Then I was invited up there to this man to go hunting. I'd never been back in that country, back there where we went. And I said it at the little trailer. That's way up on the Alaskan Highway where there's nothing but woods and mountains and animals. 
And that night at the trailer, when I was telling Brother Bisco back there and, and Brother Southwick, he said, well, uh, uh, we're going up in sheep country. He said, it won't be up there. And I said, yes. And I said, it was uh, one of the little fellows was with me had a checkered shirt on. Nobody had a checkered shirt. Brother Bisco didn't have one. None of the rest of us had one. Second night up, we'd seen spotted ram way up above Timberline. Now, that's way up where timber don't even grow, where there's nothing but caribou and sheep. And we'd spotted some way away, and on the road down that afternoon, Brother Biscoll had stumbled into some water, gotten wet. The next morning, we got up early and started after the rams that we thought we were going to get. And on his, we got up there, and we had eaten our dinner, and we couldn't find the rams, and Brother Biscoll had just shot a caribou. So then I was looking around, and we went up. Brother Southwick said to me, he said, I believe we'll, if you want to walk right good, Brother Brandon, we'll go over this mountain down in that draw. Them rams might have went over there, which is a long walk. But it don't get dark, maybe a real late, maybe 10 or 11 o'clock sometimes. It's a good long walk on them rocky mountains. So I like to walk. And so we just stand there with our arms around one another, both of our beards turning gray with our arms around each other crying and knowing. I said, Brother Bud, I hope someday in the millennium I can walk all them mountains there. He said, I hope I'm with you, Brother Brandon. Hallelujah. And we stand there just rejoicing in the Lord. And I love the mountains so well. And then we went down. That's when Brother Biscoll there shot the, uh, the, the caribou that he's a missionary to the Indians. And he wanted to feed this to his Indians. So we went down, ate our dinner, dressed the caribou out, come back. Brother and I were going up across the mountain, and when we happened to look over, and in a distance with my glasses, I spotted this animal that I saw just in the panoramic, like I told you here. Brother Bisco there standing right by our side. And so I said, there is that animal. And he put the glass on and said, it's a great big old mammoth bull caribou. And I said, I've never seen it. I thought they had panel horns, but this one had spikes. He's an odd-looking fellow just like I saw in the vision. I never shot caribou before. So well, he said, if the Lord's give him to you, so that would just, I said, yes, that's bound to be it. The only thing I'm wondering about is that checkered shirt. And I looked around at Brother Eddie. His wife must have put it, she's there with him, must have put it in his duffel bag when he got wet the day before he changed shirts and there was a checkered shirt. I said, this is it. Amen. When I got over and got the caribou, he, Bud said to me, he said, now, Brother Branham, uh, you say these horns are 42 inches? I said, that's what they'll be. He said, looked to me like about 92. I said, no, they're 42 inches. He said, now, according to what you told me before we get back to that boy down there with a checkered shirt on, Eddie, where they're going to meet us down below the mountain, a couple of miles, said, you're going to kill a grizzly bear. I said, that's thus saith the Lord. Amen. He said, Brother Bram, where is he coming from? I can see for 50 miles around. I said, he's still Jehovah Jireh. The Lord can provide for himself. And he can make squirrels come into existence. He can make a ram come into existence. If he has spoken about a bear, a bear can come into existence. Amen. Us trying to pack this heavy caribou down the trophy down the mountain, and I'd pack the rifle part of the time, and then he'd pack the rifle and vice versa. And when we got almost to a big glacier, why we got under there, it's kind of hot. We get in the glacier of ice, and sit down there a while to cool off. He said, you know, Brother Bram, we're not over about a mile from where Eddie and Blaine, them two boys, be standing. That old bear better be showing up. I said, Bud, I believe you're doubting it. He said, Brother Bram, my brother had epileptic fits for so many years. And you told me once, the first time up here when we went down to another place, told me what that boy looked like, and Eddie was riding right by my side there on a horse when the Lord gave the vision. I told him what to do with the boy if it stopped. And I, he said, I can't doubt it. I said, but I don't know where the bear is coming from. I was about 50. I'm 55 now, so that's been about three years ago. I was about 52 or 53. I said, I've never seen it fail. God will give me that grizzly bear before I get to them boys. Amen. It was almost down to where the small spruce and timber started in. A little lower down the hill, was almost into the timber. He sat down, and he was once packing the trophy. Then I had the rifle. And he said, that old bear better be showing up at me. I said, you'll be there. Don't you worry. He said, I can see every hill. I said, I, but I see the promise. 
See? He promised. I said, however, what he... I said, Bud, what is that sitting right there? He thought, that's a big silver chip grizzly. <laughs> so that's him. When we got the grizzly and come back, I remember in the vision I told you I was scared about the rifle. There's a little bitty 270 small bullet. You see, it's on tape. I got the right up there just about 500 yards, like it said. Bud said, you better shoot that bear in the back. He said, you ever shoot a grizzly before? I said, nope. He said, oh, they don't know what death is. I learned that a little later. <laughs> so he said, they don't break up from shock. said, you better sh shoot him. I said, according to the vision, I shot in the heart. He said, well, if that vision said so, I'm going to stand by. You know, I said, here we go. And we got a little closer. When I raised up, the bear saw me. That was what he wanted to make a charge. And I, I shot the bear. It didn't seem like it even hurt him. Here he come. And before I get another bullet in the gun, the bear died about 50 yards from me. Bud is white around the mouth. He said, Brother Bram, I didn't want him on my lap. And I said, <laughs> I didn't either. He said, I'm glad that vision said you got him. <laughs> he said, now, if that... If them horns are 42 inches, I'm going to have a, I'll say it the way he does, I'm going to have a screaming fit. I said, well, you just have it right now because that's what it's going to be. When we got out to Brother Eddie, I said to Brother Eddie, we tied the horses off. They're scared of a bear. Oh, my. They had to smell it. We couldn't skin him out. It's too late. Had to come back the next day. And then we broke up the string about 10 times and the horses running everywhere. So then uh, when we got out there, he said, went and got the um, tape measure out of his saddlebag. said, Blaine, I said to that brother, I said, watch that little hand now. According, I thought it might have been Billy Paul, little bitty hand, hold the tape measure around the horn. I said, watch that little hand. Punched brother Eddie. We stepped back. He put it right up like that. Exactly on the nose, 42 inches. See, just exactly. Jesus never fails. Amen. That word will never fail as long as it comes from God. I've just spotted in our midst Brother and Sister Jackson from South Africa. I guess they've been introduced, and, and uh, have you, Brother Jackson? This morning, stand up, you and Sister Jackson. I'd just like for them to see my Brother Eddie here is an old hunting partner from South Africa, too, way down. Lord bless you, Brother Jackson, Sister Jackson. So glad to have you here with us. And uh, all the ministers in the building, raise up your hand, all us in the ministry. Well, that's fine and dandy. Good. Lord bless you. We're glad to have you all here. I'm going to have a prayer line in a few minutes, so I, I don't. Yeah, I wish I could have you all to stand up and come up and preach for me. We're so glad to have you, every one of you. When I think of your loyalty and uh, coming across the nation and so forth to hear me speak about that lovely Lord Jesus, your confidence that you have that he hears my prayers. I was talking just a few moments ago in a private interview to a certain member of this church. Not over... Forty-five minutes ago, broken-hearted mother, and just as I started to say something to the woman, I don't know where she want me to say who she was or not, there came that same light that you see in that picture. It was all over. She wasn't happy. We're so glad today in this shifting age that we're living in, where you can hardly put confidence in anything. We have a kingdom that cannot shift, cannot move. The unmovable, not the rock of Gibraltar, but our faith can rest solemnly upon the rock of ages, upon Amen. Jesus Christ, the unmovable rock of salvation. I want to thank the sister that brought the little triune box with the Bible in it for my wife that year. She had... Uh, made a covenant to the Lord about this little box. She cherished it. It's got some uh, like pictures of old times on it. And she asked the Lord, she cherished the box a little too much, perhaps. Just an ordinary little box in the shape of a pyramid. And she brought it with a Bible to my wife. Thank you, sister. Every one of your little gifts and things that you give, Billy Paul and those, they get to me. I'm grateful for everything. God be with you. Don't forget now, next Sunday morning, as soon as service is over today, write out your question. If you can't, bring it next Sunday morning. 
I'll come a little early, then let him bring it to the room so I can have time to give it a scriptural background. And we'll answer the questions next Sunday morning, the Lord willing. Now, there's many handkerchiefs laying here, and I push them back just in order to get my, my notes down here and my, also my Bible, so, or my Bible and my notes, rather, so that um, uh, I can have a little room. But I'm, I pray for each one. I scripture my notes down. I had just a short time. I won't keep you like I did the last time I was here, around four hours. I made myself a promise. If I taped any more like that, I'd tape them by myself here or something other, so I wouldn't have to hold you so long. Is Dr. Lee Vale in this morning? I wanted to ask if Dr. Lee Vale, uh, uh, are you here, Brother Vale? Raise up your hand if you are. Um, is he in the back? All right. Thank you, Brother Roy. And... Um, uh, I want you to be sure to check those notes, Brother Vale. You're somewhere in the crowds back there that I can't see him, or in the hall. We have to watch. Can't let too many stand. The fire marshal won't let us do that, you see. And uh, so we are. I want you to check my revelation on serpent seed to be injected into the first uh, Ephesian church age that he's writing re it for me. Beautifully done. And uh, I want you to check that and let somebody say something against the serpent seed now, <laughs> whether it was right or not. So um, the Lord just gave it to me yesterday. See? Oh, it's beyond how I get a message. I'll be going along and something strikes me. Then if I know it's God, I'll take it over and find it in the Scripture. Then I have no, it's never failed, but from Genesis to Revelation, it's run true, no matter what people think about it. And it's been more so than ever since those seven seals. See, that did it that time. So the Lord bless you now as we study. Now, in respects to the Word, and uh, I believe somebody, uh, an engineer, ever is on, is getting a little uh, rebound here on the acoustics. Um, now, can you hear in the back? All right, raise up your hands if you can. Fine. Now, let us turn in the Bible to two places in the Scripture, and I'll try to get the message out and get out on time, if the Lord willing. And now, let's turn to Mark, the fifth chapter, and to the First Kings, the tenth chapter. Mark, the fifth chapter, First Kings, the tenth chapter. Now, but for the stranger that might be within our gates, this we put our Sunday school in one great class, and that's this class here because the rooms are all packed out with the people, and we can't have um, uh, a regular separate classes. We study a little on the Word, have fellowship together. We don't. We are not any denomination. We have no denomination. Amen. We are just free. Uh, in the Lord, and we not mean a bunch of fanaticism. We just teach the Bible and that alone. And the Lord is so good to us till he backs it up and shows that that is true. And it gives us great consolation. And now you are, you are welcome to be in our midst at any time. Now, I'm not here all the time, but we have some fine pastors here. Brother Neville, one of our pastors. Brother Caps, another of our pastors, and Brother um, and Brother Collins, Wilbur Collins, another of our pastors, and then we have different ones from different parts. Our little associated churches. If you're around in, in Texas, the Martin brothers here, and Brother um, what's the brother comes with you? I, I can't see Brother Blair this morning. Oh, Brother Blair, I didn't see it. Brother Blair, Brother Ruddle, right back here. One of the churches on 62. One of the sister churches here, Brother Junior Jackson, sitting right here by Brother Blair. I see him now. Another one of our sister churches. And we've got churches around over the country from everywhere. Brother Jack Palmer on his road up. I think they were speeding a little with a new car of his boy, kind of, you know, kind of getting a little out of the speed limits and had an accident. He hurt his jaw and um, he wasn't able to come. He went back home. So he's doing all right. And we, Brother... Ben here, another one of our brethren up in Kentucky here. 
uh, he called them this morning to see if they needed any money or anything that the church could help them with. He said everything was fine. And um, he was turning a bend with too much speed and hit some gravel, and it um, mashed his jaw or something. It, they called, and from down there, when he turned his car into a post or something, and, and called for to be prayed for. Brother Billy Collins also, we know, mashed his thumb real bad, broke the bone in out here, and had to set it. So we want to remember him in prayer. And now the reason that we stand, when we pledge allegiance, flags passing by, or anything, we always stand at attention or salute or stand at least to show respects to our nation, which we should do it, and to our flag. And what about our Lord? Remember reading his word. Let us stand now as we read uh, St. Mark 5 and beginning with the 21st verse. Notice closely now as we read. And when Jesus is passed over again by ship and to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh the sea. And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the part of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand hands on her, and she may be healed and shall live. Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about the, in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. And while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid. Only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, John, the brother of James. And he came, cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and when and that wept and bewailed greatly, and when he was come in, said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother and the damsel, of the damsel, rather, and then them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was laying. And he said to the damsel, and he, pardon me, he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tabitha, Cometh, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel rose up and walked, for she was the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them that no man should know it. And he commanded that something should be given her to eat. In the book of 
First Kings, tenth chapter, we read these three verses. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices, very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, he, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her, her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we read these stories of the Bible, our hearts jump for joy. For we know that thou art God and you never change. You never change your methods. You never change your ways. You remain God forever. Amen. And we pray, God, that you will bring the interpretation to us this morning of these scriptures that you would have us to know that our hearts might be discerned. The great Holy Spirit would come among us today and discern our thoughts and our hearts. And may there be nothing left Amen. that our hearts will not be so full of joy when we leave here that we'll say like those who came from Emmaus that night, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way. Yes. Thou ever remains God, and we are thy hungry children gathered this morning. For it's written, man shall live by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Amen. Bless us in our gathering together and all these people, Lord, that's come for hundreds and yes, thousands of miles. We pray that as they go home, their hearts will be satisfied with the good things of the mercy and grace of God. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. A very odd little text, three words that I want to speak from out of all this reading. You might say that's a very small thing, three words, out of all that you read, a portion of two chapters of the Bible, but I, I did that for a background, to take these three words, proving his word. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, where it is written, Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. When anything is proven, it will either be proven right or wrong. And when there's anything in question, it should be proven until you find out what is right. And then as you find what is right, it says, hold fast. In other words, Grip it. Don't turn it loose. Hold it fast. In other words, hold it tight so that it will not slip. Hold fast to that which is good after it's been proven right. And anything that's proven not right, then turn it loose as quick as you can. Amen. Get away from it. Don't never hold on to the wrong thing. Now, it is possible that staunch Christians, fine people, uh, hold, sometimes hold to the wrong thing, thinking it is right. But then these things should be proven, whether they are right or wrong. And it's the duty of all of us, as we are expecting to go to heaven when Jesus comes, and it's a minister's duty when any question is brought up that he solves this out and then proves it. 
but for the people that they might uh, understand because no one wants to be found wrong, holding to the wrong thing. So we have a scripture, and Jesus said all scriptures must be uh, fulfilled, that we should prove all things. And then hold fast or hold tight. Get a death grip on it. And don't turn it loose. Hold fast to that which is good. I remember in school, I learned something, and many of you learned the same lesson. When you have solved a problem, worked it out, you can take the answer and prove it by the problem. How many ever did that? All of you, of course. Then, then you don't have to worry whether your answer is right or not. The problem's answer has been proved by the problem. Therefore, you know you got the right answer. If every one of yours on your slate or sheet has been proven, the problem proved by the answer proved by the problem, then you've got it. No one can say it's wrong. You've got to get, and if you do your work neatly and correctly in the way it should be done and your answer has been proved, you can sit back and rest with the assurance that you're going to get a a on that on that sheet of paper that you turn in because it's been proven proven by the problem now there is also an old proverb that says prove it i'll believe it now uh, they got a one of our state one of our states in the nation they have a slogan i'm from missouri show me see in other words prove it to me I'm from Missouri. But this doesn't work always because God has in every age fulfilled and proved the work that he has set out for that age and spoken in his word. And every time that God's word has been proven in the age, the majority has turned it down. So, uh, prove it, and I'll believe it, is not so. You can only have faith as God gives you faith. Faith is a gift of God. Ever how religious you may be, yet it must take the... It mu you must have faith. And your faith can only rest, if you're a Christian, upon the proven Word of God. I remember God lotted His Word to each age and foretold what would happen in the this certain age that he was speaking of. Amen. Now, if Moses would have come with the message of Noah, it would not have worked. If Jesus would have come with Moses' message, it would not have worked. Or one prophet came with the other prophet's message, it would not have worked. But through his prophets, he has revealed the entirety of all of himself and his plan. Therefore, the Bible cannot be one word added to it or one word taken from it. So if you prove your problem by your, your answer by your problem, then why not prove the, the answer that we're now getting by the Word Amen. of this age? If the Bible speaks that a certain thing is to happen in this age, it's in the Bible and it will happen. Then if your answer that you're trying to tell the people, if it's proven by the book, then it is true. It's true. Otherwise, it isn't. Now we see another. Then you no doubt have heard them say, seeing is believing. That's another old proverb we have here. But that doesn't work either. It doesn't work because man can sit and look right straight at anything and they'll not see it. The word see, the English word see, has so many different meanings to it. See might mean a body of water. See might mean to understand. See might mean to look at it. And oh, there's just all kinds of words you can use. But when you say seeing is believing, you're mistaken. When you understand it, you believe it. Jesus said, except the man uh, be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. In other words, understand the kingdom because the kingdom is the Holy Spirit in you. So you have to understand what this is in you. The only way you'll understand it is compare what it makes you do with what the Bible said it would make you do. Then your problem's solved. 
And then he is that Holy Spirit. So seeing is not believing. I can prove that by the senses of the body. See, uh, seeing is not believing. I can not see this bottle of oil. I could not see it because it's behind me, yet I have a sense of a feeling that tells me I've got it in my hand. See? I couldn't see it's impossible. And now I could not reach it. It's impossible. And yet I believe it. This seeing is believing. This feeling is believing. Now I close my eyes. I neither could see it or feel it. But if I get it close and could smell it, I still believe it's there. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence not seen, taste, felt, smell, or heard. You believe it. Amen. And faith must have a resting place. And anything is contrary to the Word of God, faith in God can have no resting place unless it's a promise of God. And there it takes its eternal stand. But in the face of all these undoubting ages and things that we have went through and live in today, the worst of all, in the face of all this doubt, God does uh, go right on proving his words to be right, as he has in every age. He, unbelief doesn't stop God. It doesn't hinder him. I don't care how much the world unbelieves, it's still going to happen. Unbelief doesn't do nothing but condemns the unbeliever. The unbelief will send the unbeliever to hell. It'll rob him of every blessing God promised to him, but it doesn't hinder God from going right on with the believer. See? Unbelief doesn't stop God. It only stops the unbeliever. You say, I, the sun ain't going to shine tomorrow. I'm going to stop it. You try it. <laughs> All right, you can't do it. God has set it in order and said it would shine. It's going to shine. That's all. He said it would. There might be some clouds under it, but it's still shining just the same. You can't stop God with that. He, what, how does he make his word known to the people? First, God knowing that there would be unbelievers. Now, watch the wisdom of God knowing there would be unbelievers and how the majority would be unbelievers, he, by foreknowledge, predestinated a seed for every age that would believe it. Now, if you notice in there, for each age uh, goes right on with his word, everything right on time. Nothing hinders God. He goes right on and every click is moving just exactly right. We think sometimes it's not going to work right. Don't you worry. His clock is timed just exactly to the split instant. And everything's working just exactly right. When I look around sometime and see these Rickies and Rickettas that we got today and on the streets and how everything's going on, I think, oh, God, wait a minute, he says. The, my time piece is turning just exactly right. I've got to put you up on the same basis I did the first man. Them days I put you on the same basis as Luther and on the same basis as Wesley because, you see, sin wasn't knowing then like it is now. And when we got more knowledge now than we had then, and when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. See? And now today we've got more knowledge, more understanding, so the rivers of unbelief is flowing in hard. But God raises a standard against it. But remember, he's always, the reason that he, he predestinated these things to happen, he foretold them by his prophets they would happen, and when the righteous see these things confirmed, then they know it's right. Amen. Regardless of what anyone else says, they know it's right. We find out where, and, and, uh, and I believe it's in First Thessalonians, he said, he has predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. God not saying, I'll choose you and don't choose you, but his foreknowledge knows what you would do. Amen. So by foreknowledge, he can set in order, and he's made everything to work for his good Amen. and for your good. In Genesis, God told uh, Adam and Eve what would happen when they disbelieved his word. Now, he put right and wrong before them. And he said, the day you eat thereof, that day you'll die. And God meant just exactly what he said. He always does. He means what he said. Satan led her to disbelieve it, for Satan himself never did believe it. 
He don't believe it. So he led her to believe it, and he still does the same thing. He teaches others the same, and they disbelieve it like she did. God fortified his people behind his word. That's your only defense, not your denomination, not your father or your mother. It's all right. But behind God's word, that's the place that the believer is protected behind the word. That little avenue was broken there with a little wonder if it's right or not. It, what, uh, reasoning come in and took the place of faith. They broke the bars and God kept his word. He performed it. Satan tried to get her to believe, disbelieve it or reason. Don't reason her with it. You, you say, well, I believe you ain't got no right. When God says anything, this, this way he said that's the thing to do. You say, well, I think, but you ain't got no thought coming. Let the mind that was in Christ be in you. And Christ is the Word. Let the Word be in you. All other words be wrong. Christ's words is right. Others believe him in all of his reasons like she did. Reason why, why would God do this? Now, isn't this just as good as that? If it's contrary to the Word, it's not. So anything, any teacher, any Bible expositor, anything else would teach you or try to get you to believe anything. One little iota different from what this Bible says, it, it's a false teaching. Amen. It's Satan again. Amen. Just exactly like it was to Eve. God goes right on, no matter what he does, what Satan does, God goes right on proving it to be so. Now look what he said to Eve. Surely you will not die. You'll be wise. That's what the world's looking for today. Scientific proof. Some knowledge of a man. And he said, surely you'll not die. But God had said, you will die. And God proved it so. And we can see it. He meant what he said. Go up here to the graveyard. <laughs> you know whether he meant it or not. The day you eat thereof, that day you die. And when you go up here and check any man you want to of any age, there was never a man lived a thousand years. God proved his word so. He'll do it every time. But remember, he keeps all of his promises of blessing as well as he does his cursings. Because the eat thereof that day they died, and he proves it to you that they do die that day they eat thereof. He also keeps every word he said about his blessings. Every promise God keeps. Oh, I love that. You have to choose which one you want. His blessings by believing or his cursings by perverting it. If you pervert it and believe the perversion side of it, then you're cursed. If you believe it just the way you wrote it and hold on to it, then you're blessed. And it's always contrary to science. Always contrary to the people's scientific way of showing things. For he keeps every word, both of his blessings and his cursings. When man and women so sinned in the Andalusian uh, world, uh, he uh, against his true word. Adam and Eve sinned against his true word, but uh, and uh, all generations that followed him began to do the same thing. He pronounced death upon them, and finally it come to a total, completely annihilation. But everything on the earth was covered over by the water, washed it completely off with water. Now the same God that brought a total annihilation to everything upon the earth, every herb, every creature, but what he reserved and took above the earth, everything that he promised that he would do, that he done. And the same God that promised the water and kept his word, the same God promises the fire, and he'll keep his word. He'll keep his word. Now, now, what did he do? How did they know his word? Because his every way of doing, of proving himself, before he does any damage or does any judgment, he always sends people the word and always warns the people. Oh, I love that. Then we can see exactly where we're at. Amen. There were all kinds of ministers and associations 
in the days of Noah. And there were all kinds of religions in the day of Noah. For Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. But there came on the scene a prophet. And he started to do something. Started to building an ark. And God sent his prophet Noah to uh, prove it, to send his word and tell him that there was coming a destruction that he could not stand the way that, that the people were doing. And he had to destroy man that he had once created. Now the word came to the prophet always. He never changes. Malachi 3 said, I'm God and I change not. Noah was sent to a scientific age with an unscientific message. Noah was sent to an intellectual age with an unintellectual message. He was sent to an age of science when he had a message of faith and promise to a scientific age. So could you believe that a scientific age would believe an unscientific message, a age of great intellectual, and then would you believe that they would have faith in something that seemed absolutely silly to the human mind? But God always does it in that way. Noah was a confirmed prophet of the Lord. Amen. He is God's messenger of the hour. Uh, he had to believe that the people had to believe his message after he had been confirmed of the Lord that it was God's word and God was going to keep his word. Amen. Now, it's the same thing today. We're at the end time. Amen. Now, those people ought to have known. See? Now, you notice Noah was the type of the Jews that will be carried over through the tribulation. Enoch was the type of the, um, of the real message of uh, 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 the translation of the church. For Enoch was taken up, then the flood came. And uh, both of them, the first prophet, Enoch, was taken out of the way so Noah could go on with his, with his uh, God could go on with Noah. And now the church will be taken away so that God can deal again with the Jews, uh, the remnant of the Jews, 144,000, as we've been through it in the scriptures here. But in the face of all the scientific, unbelieving age, God proved his word of promise true by sending them the flood. Now remember, in the days of Noah, it had never rained upon the earth. God had a mist to come up out of the earth and to irrigate, but it never rained. But Noah said, it's going to rain. Amen. Now that was, they could take an instrument and shoot up into the skies and say there is no moisture up there. There's no rain there. We can prove there's no rain there, regardless of what science said. God said it was going to rain. So that does it. Now, what did God do, to my opinion, when some of them shook the world a little and threw it out of its cater, then it threw the back this way, the heat of the earth into the coal only brought the, the moisture. And the world was covered over first, and the atmosphere is up there, the humidity in the air just come together in a form of cloud and let it down. That was all. Now, we know today that there's fire up there because the gases are in the earth. And the Bible said the heavens and earth will pass away with a great noise and the earth shall melt with fervent heat. So we know that it's up there. So just the same as it was in the days of Noah. And now remember, the message of Noah's time was only by faith and not scientific proven. But today, the message is according to the Word of God and scientifically proven. Amen. Elijah come first doing miracles, not doing any preaching, just going from place to place doing miracles. The next time he come in the form of John the Baptist, he come doing no miracles, just preaching. And the third time he comes, it's both miracles and preaching. Amen. See? See how that... What's how in continuity the scriptures run? We could just pl spend plenty of time on that, but we won't, we'll omit it because I believe you get the idea. Amen. He did in that age just as 
He uh, uh, did in all ages, and like he will do, just as he promised to do. God promises anything, then he comes down and proves his word to be right. All that believe, all that believe the message of that age come in and was saved. So will it be in any age. All who did not believe the message and the messenger perished. And all who truly believe the word of God today will be taken out. All that does not believe the word of God will perish with the world. Because they are of the world and everything that's in the world must perish with the world. And everything that's saved in God must be in God and cannot perish. I'll give them eternal life and raise them up at the last day. Now, what a consolation to every believer to know when you're in Christ that just as sure as God keeps his word and perishes the world, he keeps his word and raises up his people and saves them. Amen. He proves it. He proves his word of promise true to Abraham in his age. Notice it was unscientific in Abraham's age for a man of a hundred years old and a woman at ninety for them to have a baby way past the age. But Abraham could not explain it. He go to the doctor and say, Doctor, is it possible? It's impossible. Go to the hospital and make ready for the mother to have the baby or whatever it would be if you want to compare it with this age. They call him insane. He's out of his mind. But God said. And he, the Bible said in Romans 4th chapter that Abraham staggered not the promise of God Amen. through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God. Amen. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible and was satisfied, held on, holding fast. For he was fully persuaded that what God promised, God was able to do. Amen. And we're supposed to be his children. Amen. Now I feel religious. See when you get to think of that. Oh, he proved it. After all those years, he turned Abraham and Sarah back to a young woman and had the baby. And Abraham and Sarah lived 45 years later. Sarah died, and Abraham remarried again after being 145 years old and had seven other sons besides his daughters. When he was past barren, his sterile, his he had no seed, no life left in him almost another hundred years before that. Amen. Why? He considered not his own body. He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered only what God said and no God would prove what he said. Amen. God proves what he says he'll do. In the midst of unscientifics and scientifics and, and amongst anything, whatever it is, God proves that he's right. Always proves his word. He's right. All others are wrong. Also, he proved it to Lot. When he said, if you don't get out of this city, I'm going to burn her. And he told Abraham if he could find ten men, he'd spare the city. And he couldn't find the ten men. So he proved his word was right. Where's the fire coming from? It's not out here on these plains. Out here in these slime pits. But God said so, and Abraham knew it was going to happen. Amen. Lot knew it was so, and he escaped to the mountain. He promised his seed to be a stranger in a strange land and be misjudged by the people. And they would sojourn, Abraham's seed, for 400 years amongst strangers, strange people. And he fulfilled his word just to Exactly what he said he would do. Abraham's seed did sojourn in Egypt 400 years. He promised also to deliver them with a mighty hand. A strong hand he would deliver the people out of the Egyptian bondage. And he kept his word. Look what he had to do to get them children down in Egypt. It looked like disaster befall, was befalling and everything. It looked like it, it was horrible for Joseph to be considered dead and poor uh, Isaac or Jacob his uh, um, father or Isaac his father rather to uh, uh, Jacob that was Isaac was his grandfather uh, Jacob his father to believe that his own son had Amen. been killed by animals how hard it was on little Joseph to know that the poor little fella away from his people 
betrayed by his brethren, thrown into a ditch, supposedly to be dead, sheep blood put upon his coat where they slayed a lamb to eat it, put the blood upon it and took it to his father, knowing all of this. But Joseph could remember one thing, that the hand of the Lord was upon him. He knew that he was a believer. No matter how much his brothers turned him out, how much there's no cooperation or nothing else, Joseph knew God would keep his word. When he saw that vision of all of them bowing before him, he knew that had to come to pass because it was thus saith the Lord. Amen. I don't care how unreasonable it seemed, Joseph knew it was the truth. No matter how hard the task was and what he had to go through with, he knew someday every one of them would bow before his feet. How is he going to do it when they hated him? But he knew God would prove his word so every time. So will they do it today. God will prove his word so no matter what science says it can't be done, how educated intellectual we get, how the church has gone off into a bunch of formality and so forth, God will still prove his word right. Amen. Rest yourself right in that word. Yes, Joseph had much to go through, but to go down into Egypt. But God brought him out just exactly like he said. A very beautiful type of the day if we had time to go into it. I believe we have before here at the tabernacle. Went through it. But God kept his word. Because they had to stay down there. It was hard for those Hebrew children down there in Egyptian bondage, which had been blessed and given the fruit of the land, the best place, Goshen, to find out that they had to become slaves. And those mothers, to have to give into the hands of an Egyptian soldier the fruit of their womb, their darling little baby, and see them stand there and take a big knife and just cut it open and throw it over on the ground, feed it to the gators. Now, it was a hard thing to them have to go through that. But one day, the predestinated seed was born. Amen. A child that was a proper child. Amen. There was something about it that seemed strange. Out on the back side of the desert one day, the Holy Ghost came down in the form of a pillar of fire and settled in the bushes and said, I have heard the groans of my people. Amen. And I remember my promise and the time of deliverance is at hand, and I'm sending you down there to do it. Amen. With a stick in his hand, his wife on a mule, a baby in her lap. He did it. Amen. By the power of Almighty God, the most ridiculous thing. What would a, what would a crooked stick be to 10,000 spears? But you see, God is in it. Amen. It depends on where his word is. Yes. Moses had his word. Pharaoh had spears. Moses had the word. That's all he needed was the word. That's all you need today. It's not a credential from some church. You don't need a denomination to back you up. You need the word to take the rapture with it. You don't need some credential. You don't need some long history of some school to be healed this morning. You need to accept the word. That does it. You don't need the doctor's word if the doctor says he's done all he can do. That's all he can do. He says you got a cancer tumor, you're going blind, you're deaf, dumb. Whatever it is, that doesn't matter. If you can take that word through that burning promise of the bush hunter, hey man, something's going to happen. God will prove his word to be so every time that it's received. That's what you need. His word. He proves it. He keeps it. You can rest assured that it's right. He proves his word in every age by the most unusual way. But he always does it the same way. Amen. See? What did he do in the days of Noah when he's fixing to deliver the remnant? He sent them Noah, the prophet. Amen. Sent Noah a sign. And now notice, when he comes to deliver the children of Israel, what does he do? His same way. Amen. He sends his prophet. His prophet's got the word. Amen. The signs and wonders of the word promised backs it up that it's exactly the truth. Oh, yeah. Israel made her march to the promised land. Amen. Because they believed it. Amen. And in the wilderness journey, it came to pass that they disbelieved this prophet. After seeing the word being so confirmed, the bride got out of step. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm speaking about yeah. in the vision. Got out of step. There was one stayed up in the name of Joshua and Caleb and believed the word of promise true. Regardless of what the circumstances was. Watch when they got to Kadesh Barnea. At Kadesh Barnea, Moses sent out 
or one of each tribe to go spy out the land, see which way they was to enter. And he sent his general, uh, Joshua, which was a prophet. So he sent a minor prophet under Moses, and uh, Joshua listened to Moses, and he sent him out. So he said, go over and spy that land out. And the general went out and picked him out, uh, a man out of each tribe, and they took off. He took Caleb, his side buddy, because he knew Caleb believed. They went over into the promised land and came back with a bunch of grapes that taken two men to pack. So he said, now, so that Israel will have the evidence before they even get into the promise. Amen. See? They'll have the evidence that God said it's a good land and it's filled with milk and honey. It's a grand land. It's a good land. Amen. Now you're on all this old garlic, leek, and whatever you got here in Egypt. Now we're taking you to a land with milk and honey. You've probably never tasted either one, milk or honey, down there in Egypt all these years. They just give you the slaves' ration. But now you're going to this land. So just at the time they got in about one day's journey, where Kadesh Barnea, the great judgment seat of the world was, they stopped under these, these great palms out there in the springs and camped. He said, now to let the people know, watch out a perfect, what a real perfect evidence it is. How God does that just as he does today. He said, now God said the land is great. Now, before you go over, I want you to see the land's great. So go bring me back some evidence of the land and show it to the people. So they got up there, and now always when you come to bring back an evidence, there the enemy lays in the road. When some of them fellows looked over and seen those great giants of Canaan, oh my, they said, we can't do it. But they brought back the evidence that the land was there. Amen. They had not been falsely led. God was proving to them his word even before they entered the land. Amen. Can't you see today that if you drive a thousand miles to hear the word and to watch it being proved Amen. and confirmed, it's the evidence that it's a great land. Amen. You can see a shadow of a man laying dying with a cancer. Be made whole. If you see the words of God as he spoke and happened in the day, be confirmed. It's the evidence that he keeps his word. There's a great land. If my life is just about gone and God comes down and spares it again, that shows that there's the evidence of an eternal life. Or you once put in a dark in the door of that church. Now you stand in line to get into it. It's an evidence. God! Keeps his word and proves it to you. Amen. That is true. Drive for thousands of miles. Come out here the morning, looked out there and seen them people feeding their babies out of a Coca-Cola bottle, a little cereal about five o'clock in the morning, sitting on that lot. I thought, God, I'd be the lowest hypocrite in the world. Let them people come all that distance and tell them something that was wrong. But I feel sorry for them. My heart goes for them. They're hungry and thirsting for God. Help me, Lord, to tell them the truth or take me away from this world. Let me tell them people the truth, so help me, God, I said, you hold my hand and let me know what's truth, and then back that up by confirmation of what I said to be the truth, that they'll know that it is the truth. Don't let them poor people be deceived. No. How my heart goes to something like that, to see faithful people. Imagine Joshua thought the same thing that day when he gathered them around, seen them wash their clothes out and get ready against the third day. Yes, he proved it. Now, Joshua said what? When they said, oh, we can't do it. We just can't do it. We'll have to get out of our organization. We're, we're, we're finished. We couldn't do it now. We just can't do this because it's not reasonable. And when Joshua led them up there, it was the month of April when the waters was high and Jordan was pretty near as wide as the Ohio River. Looked like God made an awful mistake. You know, sometimes you get sick. And you say, well, I'm a Christian. God... He made a mistake. He let me get sick and I'm a Christian. Don't you realize that the Bible said that everything had worked together for good to them that loves God? Amen. When Joshua led them there, now Jordan gets real low. You can wade across almost anywhere. Or right, unless you hit a hole of water where it's pretty deep. You can, uh, all the little fords and things right there at the, at the banks where Jericho was at. Why, it's, why you can wade across this much more than an ankle deep. You drive across it, a jeep, drive right across it, walk across it or anything. But he led them there at the time of April when the flooded country was flooded there for almost a mile. The water was probably 30, 40 feet deep in there. And he said, the third day we're going over. Amen. God said so. Amen. Call the people together and sanctify them. 
For the third day you are passing over Jordan. See how God lets that thing happen? Just to make it make people just to pull out his crowd. What they do, they sanctify themselves and got ready. Regardless how deep the water was, how muddy it was, and how swift the current was. They they Amen. know God would prove his word. No matter what how close you are to Jordan. No matter what your circumstances is, you can only hold that promise of God in your heart. God will prove it that it's so. In the midst of all unbelief, he'll still prove it to be so. Yes, he doesn't. Circumstances doesn't stop him. He still will do the same as they did then. Notice, it was by his believers that he proves his word by. He can only prove his word not by unbelievers. It's only by the believers that he can prove his word. No matter how much the rest of them claim to be. Oh, I believe, brother. See, if you do, God will prove it so. Because we look and see the others. How can we say then? See, it's by true believers that he proves his word. Not by those who say they believe, but those who really believe. It's by his believing children that he proves his word. Now, he had the believers. The old crop had died off. The unbelievers that said we couldn't take it. He let every one of them perish. Why? Every one of them but the believers. Who was left? Moses had been taken to glory. And the unbelievers had perished in the wilderness, and this was their children. There were only two that crossed over. And that was the believers, Joshua and Caleb. Amen. They was the believers. They was the one who crossed over. The only way God can do it is by his believing children. You believe that? All right, his believers was the one that done it. He used them to cross over with. See? Now I want you to notice. He does it that way in every age. He does it every time by the same method. He has to take believers, and then in order to have believers to meet that word, he's got to predestinate them to that age. Amen. You see it? He's got to predestinate this thing to be there to meet the challenge of the age. Did it get you? Did you feel it? Did you see it? Do you understand it? That's what's happening today. He predestinated it to this. Amen. By his foreknowledge. When he predestinated Malachi 4, it's got to happen. Amen. When he can even predestinate anything to happen, his word, he cared to prove his word to be so. When he predestinates anything to happen and says it will happen, he knows that seed will be there just at that time. He predestinated a bride, she's going to be there going to be a rapture, she's going to be there. He predestinates it by his foreknowledge. See, there's nothing going to stop it. When God told them, now I give you a promise of a promise land. I told your father Abraham that I, his children are sojourned down here for 400 years. Now, Moses said, I am the prophet of the Lord. Now, watch and see that what I prophesy, if it comes to pass, then you know I'm sent of the Lord. For you know that God's already told you that. Amen. Now, now, if I prophesy this and it happens and that and it happens and this and it happens every time, just the same now you know I'm sent of the Lord to tell you. Now there is a promised land that God promised it. See? And God promised this land. Now it's a good land. It's pouring the milk and honey. Follow me. And as he went out into the wilderness, or he was the journey to take him, in the wilderness where God told him to bring him back to Mount Sinai, then God came down before all Israel with a pillar of fire and confirmed that what Moses had said it was there. Yeah. Proving that it was right. Confirming Moses there. Moses said that I was on this mountain. I appeared to him in the form of a burning bush and now I got the whole mountain burning. Amen. They said, don't, don't let God speak. Let Moses speak. We'll perish. He said, I, I, that's, I won't do this no more. I'll raise him up a prophet. He'll, he'll speak to him in my name. So that's what he does. Exactly the way he works his word. Notice, then those who disbelieve, after they got so close to the land that they disbelieved. Now you're just taking notes, put on Hebrews 6 right here, where it said, Those which are once enlightened, made partakers of the Holy Ghost, see they shall fall away to renew themselves again to repentance. See if they're crucified to themselves, the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. It's impossible for those to be saved. 
See, just as impossible for those to cross over in that promised land. People will come right up to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They'll come right up to the Word. They'll come up to all denominations and all churches and all catechisms and everything. But when it comes to that Word, that crossing line, they say, oh, I don't know about that. My church doesn't teach it that way. I don't care what your church teaches. The Bible says it's that way. Then you say, how do I know it's right? He confirms it. He proves it. Now, the Bible that day said there's a good land over there. And it's just full of milk and honey and fine grapes and pomegranates. And, oh, it's a beautiful place. Well, they said, now, some of you slip over and take a look at it. Come back so we can console these people. We're going to cross over right away now, if you all just believe it. Well, away they went. And here they come back. All oh, two of them just shouting. Well, praise God. We've seen it. We've seen it. Oh, it's wonderful. There's nothing like it. The rest of the tents down around saying, oh, no, 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 no. We can't do it. How many went over? Them two. Right. Them too, because they know that God would prove his word right. Amen. Notice, no sweating Jordan, no, sir. No flooded banks of Jordan or no giants of Canaan could stop them. God proved his word to be so. Amen. He took them right into the land. He'll do the same thing again. Yes, sir, in the promises of the day. He proves his word. Regardless, he proves his word. He stopped the mouth of hungry, human-eating lions one day to prove his word was true, that he could deliver. The Daniel the prophet, and they kept those lions fed on human flesh. And he kept those lions up to be hungry so that when a man fell in there, a child, whatever they throw in there, it was capital punishment, that lion would rip him to pieces. Uh, this bunch of hungry lions. And to get this prophet with the word of the Lord to the children of Israel, which had prophesied they'd take that place. And there he was with them. But God wasn't through with it. He wanted to prove his word. He could deliver. And they starved those lions and throwed that prophet in there, and they rushed towards him like that. That pillar of fire standing there, and any animal was scared of fire. That pillar of fire standing there, the lions laid down. <laughs> he kept his word. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God keeps his word. He proves it. He proves it so. Now, he took the heat right out of the blaze of the fiery furnace to prove that his word was so that he could deliver from the fire. Amen. Right in among those blazes where those children were thrown in there and stayed in there a long time when even the man that threw them into it, the intense heat of the, of the furnace, killed the great soldiers that was leading them up there and God let the fire burn right on. But he took the heat out of it. He proves if you stand by him, he'll stand by you. Amen. Stand by you? Well, sure. An hour later, they open the door. He said, say, how many did you put in there anyhow? He said, we see three we put in there. He said, there's four in there. And one of them looks like the Son of God. Amen. See? He shows, because why? He is the Word. Amen. And they said, God is able to deliver us from that fiery furnace, but nevertheless we are not bowing to any image because we're standing by the Word. Amen. Any image form of religion, get away from it. God will stand by you. He'll take the heat out of the persecution. He'll take the, the life out of the cancer. He'll, take the, he'll do anything. He's God. You stand by Him, He'll stand by you. He proves His Word true every time. Took the heat out of the blaze, stopped the lion's mouth, and so forth. Here's another thing God did to show that he was God. Man got so after in the wilderness there that they were getting themselves scholarships, making themselves great men. They had some organizations called Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, and whatever more. And they were great men. They made priests out of one another. And they'd done great uh, things like that, make high priests and big men and dignitaries and so forth. But God, in the midst of all of it, he raised up a prophet. A son of a priest. Never went into the wilderness at nine years old. Couldn't read his name. It's a letter size of a boxcar. Why? Why did he do it? He was a prophet. If he'd been trained in the education of his father, he'd probably been a Pharisee or a Sadducee or one of their groups. But he had an important job. That was to announce the Messiah. Because why? God kept his word and proved it. A voice of one crying from the seminary, Behold, I've got my doctor's degree. <laughs> that, that might be in the old lady's birthday almanac, but not in God's Word. Amen. 
He said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Was it preparing the way of the Word then, that the Word could be made manifest? Hallelujah! Don't you see in shadow? Stop here a minute. In the last days, there's got to be a place prepared for the Word to be made manifest. And we're now living by the evidence of the new land. Amen. Amen. The Son of Man. John's commission without education, without anything, stayed in the wilderness. His sermons is in types. Axe is laid to the root of the tree. That's what he saw. Cut with the axe. Make his shack. Make some fire to burn his wood. Uh, oh, you generation of snakes. That's what he saw. The nastiest thing in the jungle to him in the bush was a snake. That you generation of snakes. Who's warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Don't begin to say we've got this, we belong to this, we belong to that. God's able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham. The axe is laid to the root of the tree and every tree that don't bring forth good fruit. What does he do with it? What is when it won't bring up some locusts and things for him, he cuts it down, burns it up. Mm-hmm. He'll gather the wheat into the garner, but the chaff he'll burn with an unquenchable fire. Amen. A man like that. Not even with his clergy coat on. <laughs> Not even his priest bonnet. See? He come with a piece of sheepskin raped around him, with a piece of leather cut off of a camel's back. <laughs> Raved around him and come out there with his whiskers and hair bushed out like that, said the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Amen. He come daring. Why? It was God's word being proven. God's Amen. able to be soon. God promises. Hold I send my messenger before my face. Not a very religious, not a scientific or religious proof, but God's word's proof. Amen. God was keeping his words. Not a scholar at all, but a prophet sent in the name of the Lord. He did that. Why? To confirm his word. Now then, priest said, now, we know there's coming one in the last days, so we'll school every boy we got. Get ready for it. Every one of you boys must have a college education. You must come in here, no doubt, boy, to be in the leadership, he'll come in the way of the Levites, because there's where the priest should come for But he wasn't a priest. He was a prophet. Amen. That's of God's choosing. Amen. You don't have to come from a certain denomination or a certain lineage. God's choosing by predestination for knowledge. He comes by God's way of choosing. So they wouldn't believe him because it didn't come the way that they had may have thought he was coming. That could repeat again. You know. Usually does. But we find that he come the way that God did to prove his word. Notice, he caused the virgin to conceive to prove his word. Isaiah 9, 6. And we find out that unto us a son is born, a child is given. Now we find out that he said that a virgin should conceive. And God caused the virgin to conceive what? To prove his word. Amen. Now listen, just a few minutes, we'll be closing. He caused a virgin to conceive to prove his word. That was absolutely, it stumped all scientists. You understood that, did you? The, the earth is cursed. The whole earth is cursed because of Adam's sin. But when this little seed... Now, the woman doesn't have a seed. She has a field that the seed lays in. Not a seed, because it's not no germ. Germ has, uh, seed has to have life in it. But isn't it? It's just the material. The life isn't there. So the seed is in the man. That's the reason the serpent seed had to be in the woman. See, because it wasn't the seed of God. We know that. Go ahead. Wait till you get this book and read it, and then you'll, you'll see. Or just show you by the Scripture. Just open the whole thing up. It's the same as the water baptism. And thing. See yeah, how it is. God never is wrong. He's always right. Amen. Though you can't understand it, believe it anyhow. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just exactly the truth. Amen. And now, we find out that he, he said this. He caused this to happen. Now, when this little seed without a man came into a little egg in the field that he had created, then that little seed, the little germ crawls into the egg, the little tail wiggles off here and starts developing cell after cell, living off of the mother's life, the, her body. And in there, she feeds it through her bloodstream. And we find out now she feeds it, not its blood. It's her blood. No, and now it has one speck of the mother's blood. But it feeds from the vitamin stuff from the mother, but not her blood. It's all bound in a bundle of her blood to keep it from shock and things like that in the water. But it isn't one speck of the mother's blood. A mother can be dying with TB and born from the baby. It can't inherit it because TB is a germ, comes through the bloodstream. But she can... He can uh, Two, tuberculosis is not inherited. Weakness it is, but not TB.
because it has to catch the mother's breath and get the germ. You see, before it can, the baby is perfectly free when it's born because it's none of the mother's blood. Now, we find that God came into this little cell, see, and he began to develop cells, grew from his mother's vitamins and things as she. Then when he became old enough to eat himself, he began to eat, and what is that? It's the it's the dust of the earth, which you come up and plant life and animal life and so forth. And as he began to eat the fish and the bread and the so forth, he began to develop cells. And then when he was fully matured at 30 years old, he was baptized in obedience to John down here to God in the water and went out. And what happened? The dove, which was God, descending from heaven with a voice saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to run. What did he come to do? To redeem that part of the earth. He was the beginning of the creation of God because God is not a creation. Only in Christ He is a creation because God is eternal and a spirit and a spirit is not created. Amen. Amen. He was the beginning of the creation of God and God redeemed that body. See, when He come down, this is my beloved Son. I'm well pleased in Him. So he, God came down after going through this and now every son that you eat and born of a natural sexual birth the way you come. Then when it comes to place the where you go through water baptism, then Holy Ghost baptism, then the Holy Ghost comes down at the fire baptism and claims this creation the same as it did him. The Holy Ghost and God the same spirit. Amen. It comes down and claims this body for the resurrection. Amen. And he was raised for our justification. Amen. All the Father has given me will come. Not one will be lost. I'll raise it up at the last day. Not one hair of the head will even perish. That is the beginning of the creation of God. This is the continuation of the creation of God. Then the whole earth has to have a baptism. And then the Holy Ghost comes down in the city to dwell upon the earth. And the tabernacle of God is with man and dwells with them. God has tabernacled here on earth. Amen. This whole redemption plan, justification, sanctification, baptism, the Holy Ghost, the same as it is then. Now notice, he caused this virgin to conceive. And in this she brought forth a son without knowing a man. This is some science to the ages. It still does. They perhaps laughed at Isaiah when he spoke and said this virgin would conceive. Now how could that be? I imagine Isaiah, the embarrassment. When he heard God say, I'll give them a super sign. I'll give them an everlasting sign. A virgin shall conceive. Now him noted amongst the people, his people, a prophet, vindicated of God. Now when he come out before the doctors and so forth with this statement, a virgin shall conceive. See, it had never been since the beginning of time. It goes way on back to where God created his first man. But here now that a woman that's here on earth is going to conceive. Think of it in a sensible realm. What that prophet was embarrassed, but he knew God would keep his word. He'd prove it. Amen. I imagine every Hebrew family got their little daughter ready to have this baby. See? Bought its shoes and boots or whatever they were, wearing. The little bird iron got ready for, for the baby to come. Generations passed. But God proved his word. Amen. A virgin did conceive. Amen. And she brought forth the baby. Amen. Proved that his prophet's word was the truth. He always stands by him. This son of the virgin was the word made manifest. Now, St. John 1, if you want to read that, St. John 1, this prophet, this prophet too, but this son of the virgin was the word made manifest, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, the whole earth is God's creation, but it's lost. See, then he redeems this earth. And you're a part of the earth, and he redeems you by the same way he redeems the whole earth. See? Now, this son of the virgin was the word made manifest. In the beginning was the word, the word is with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Satan tried every scheme to make him discredit this. Satan tried everything that he could to, to make him discredit. Tried to get him to take the kingdom without suffering. Tried to get him to take it without redemption, which was God's plan in the Garden of Eden when he killed the lamb, but only by blood would he take it. Even promised him all the kingdoms of the world if he would take it. Just think about a promise. Don't you realize, my dear precious friends, at this minute, that Satan makes you a promise for it. He'll make you a, one of their best ministers in the association. He'll give you the front seat in every church and make you a deacon. He'll do anything if you just get away from this word. Now, notice, 
Make every, give him the world and all the kingdoms. He could take them. He's trying to get him to break that word because he thought he had him right there. If he, could. he made Moses break it. He made Eve break it. But he hit the wrong guy this time. Why? He was the word. Amen. And he didn't know it. He was that word himself. I can see him. We want to picture him kind of a kid's picture. I can see that big old black wings fog up against Eve and say, Now, I tell you what, it's pleasant. You should try it. But God said if we did, we would die. Oh, well, surely you won't die. See, oh, that's nonsense. That's some old foggy idea. Don't you believe in it? But God had said so. Amen. God proved it's right, and he's proven it right now. People are dying at this minute. Amen. He still proves it's right. Notice. And when he come to Moses, he said, Moses, you know you've got a hot head. Mm. You're hot-tempered. Look what that bunch of renegades has done. See, why don't you just go down there and really tell them about it? And he did. <laughs> But when he hit this 10,000 volt line, <laughs> it singed his feathers <laughs> when he ran up against him. It said, oh, listen, it said, I'll give you all the kingdoms. It is written. Amen. It is written. Amen. He said, now, if thou be the son of God, See, he's always doubted it. He still teaches others to doubt it. He taught Eve to doubt it. He taught Moses. He taught all of them to try to doubt it. He's teaching you to try to doubt it. And you'd sit right here now if you want me to call your name. It's been, Satan's been trying a long time to get you to doubt me. Amen. You do that. Sister, if you do that, well, you, uh, not me, but just, doubt, just believe this word. You don't have to believe me, but you believe this. If I say this word, it's not mine, it's his. Amen. My word's Amen. different, but this is his. Notice. Now, notice. I don't want to get into that right now. Notice. Promise. All of his words absolutely is true. He proved them. He proved because he proved that he was the true word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. What? How does he live? By, uh, well, if you just take some of God's word, he'll live. Now, that was what he said. Did you notice? E-V-E-R. Every word. Amen. How does he live? Oh, he eats. No, oh, he dies by it. That's flesh. Well, he, oh, he belongs to church. He believes everything but that. He's still dead. Do you get it? He can only live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the high priest, the bishop, the cardinal, the pastor, God. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How do we know it's God's word? He says so, then he proves it. He proves his word. Notice, then if that be so, your confession will not make you live. Your church membership will not make you live. Notice, by his word only, not just one word misplaced, no one shall, one word call, killed the human race. In the Bible, in Revelation 22, one word will still kill the whole thing. His name will be taken from the book of life. Whosoever shall add one word or take one word. Not one word. Not, not, I mean, not, not two words, just one word. Amen. Not one sentence, one word. Amen. One word. Oh, people, do you understand? Now, I'm not just exactly talking to this audience. This is tapes, you see, and it goes all over the world. Do you understand, people of the world, that one word, one word, not one sentence, not one paragraph, one word, that's all Eve disbelieved. Brought God proved it. But then if you keep every word, you shall live. They doubted one word, brought death to the human race. But man shall not live by bread alone, or his physical strength, but by every word. Every word, just the way it's written. The Bible says it is of no private interpretation. No man has any word any at all to try to anything interpret the Word of God. God is his own interpreter. When he promised, he said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, a virgin shall conceive, and she did. See, whatever God says, God proves it. No matter how much you try to think the physical resurrection couldn't be, and then people's back are just dust of the earth and past dust now. They're just into the acids and gases that their body was made out of. Their soul still living. God said, I'll raise it up. Job said, though the skin worms destroys this body, yet in my flesh I'll see God. Amen. No matter every word 
It's got to be kept. And man shall live by that word. You raise the man from the dead after being dead four days to prove that he was the resurrection and the life. When a man had been dead four days and stinking, his nose already fell in in four days. That's right, the first thing falls in a human being is the nose. Drops in on the carpets. Gets slick and drops in. Then the skin, the bugs, you put you in a sealed up coffin, whatever it might be. But yet the skin worms don't have to come from the ground. They're in you. Did you notice Job said, though my, my skin worms destroyed me? Not the worms of the earth. There wouldn't be any. The worms is in you, ready to destroy you. Death's working in your mortal body. But when you got Christ, then life is working in your mortal body to raise you up again. Amen. See? He raised the man from the dead after being dead four days. He stinketh to prove what he said. I am the resurrection in life. Now, who could say that but God? I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Hallelujah. You believe that? Amen. And he raised that man up to prove that his word was right. Right. Notice. He was the word. Hebrews 4.12. You want to put this down? Hebrews 4.12. It said the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. A discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Is that right? A discerner. To prove that he was the Word, what did he do? Peter came to him. His name is Simon. And he came to Jesus and he said, um, sit down out there. And Jesus, as soon as he came to him, he said, your name is Simon and you are the son of Jonas. Uneducated, no degree behind him. He had nothing but just a common fisherman, no education. The Bible said he was ignorant and unlearned. But he became the bishop of the church of, of uh, Jerusalem. Amen. Why? Why? Jesus told him who he was, what his name was, and what his father's name was. And he knew that that was the word. Because the Bible said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And that had to be the prophet. And there was no prophet's promise after Malachi to the Messiah. Amen. 400 years without a prophet. And here was a man standing there confirming or proving his word to this man was predestinated to life, he said, Your name is Simon. From hence, you're the son of Jonas. From henceforth you'll be called Peter. Think of it. Amen. Who did he prove it to? Why did he prove that word to... Uh, why did he prove that word to Caiaphasus? He was God. He knew. Caiaphasus would never believe it. But this man was ordained to life. He knew it right then. One time standing in the midst where another man a few days later went and got a buddy around the mountain about 15 miles from where he was preaching. Brought him back to the next day. You stand there amongst and come up to where Jesus was. Jesus looked around. He was God. See, he had discernment. That showed that, see, make the word right. He proved the word. Now some of them say, you know, that man's the word. Nonsense. Some priest said, that guy, you know, that ain't the word. But you know what the scripture says? The Lord our God shall raise up a prophet like in the Moses. That's him listening. at him. Where he said, You're, uh, behold, an Israelite in whom there's no guile. This fellow said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. He knew who'd believe it. He said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. You are the Word. Jesus proved he was the Word. By the Word. Notice. The little woman at the well. She's looking for a Messiah. She had nothing to do with their big crowds and denominations and so forth they had in them days. She's looking for a word. So a man one time sitting over an ordinary man, sitting over against the way, said, said, woman, bring me a drink. She said, now, wait a minute. He's probably trying to get fresh with me, she might have thought in her heart, because she's marked a woman of ill fame. said, oh, uh, you have, why do you ask me a question like that? We got segregation here. You're... You're, you're just a you're Jew. We're Samaritans. It's not, it's not custom. It's not right for you to ask me like that. See? He said, woman, if you knew who we're talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. She said, you for a drink? I don't even see a bucket or a rope. How would you ever give me any water from this well? He said, that's not the well I was talking about. See? After a while, she said, this is a strange fella. So she started letting the water pot up, uh, up and said, 
Well, um, the water that I give would be springs of water, geysers, brushing up in the eternal life. And you're so. Well, she said, now, wait a minute, I, I understand you being a Jew. So now, you Jews said, uh, you mean to tell me that you're greater than our father Jacob who dug this well? He was a god of Jacob. Hmm? Amen. So, you mean that you're greater than, than Jacob had dug this well? An ordinary man. Hmm? Look like. That's all he's seen. An ordinary man said, you say you're greater than our father Jacob who dug the well and he could drink from it himself and his cattle? Well, we are just blessed by drinking this well where that prophet is. Hmm? He said, if we worship in this mountain, you say Jerusalem. He said, salvation is of the Jew. Woman, we know what we're talking about. He said, you worship, you don't know what. Jew's supposed to know the word. Hmm? What it was supposed to be. But see, he's watching now. What? He's going to, what is he going to do? Prove his word. Hmm? Why well, she said, um, uh, he said, by the way, go get your husband and come here. And she said, I don't have any husband. Why? Well, said, you've told the truth. See, because you've had five, and the one you now have is not your husband. See? Watch, something happened. See? Something took life. Now, if it hadn't been in there to begin with, if she hadn't had representation from predestination, it never took hold. There stood priests there said, this man's Beelzebub. See, no representation. Eternal life you always was. See, you have eternal life. There's only one form of it. That's God. You were his attribute. He thought of you and knowed you before the foundation of the world in his mind. See? She looked around. Look what a, what a sinful shape she was in. But see, he couldn't, he couldn't get that priest because the priest was an educated scholar, a theologian in the Word, but no representation in heaven. See? Wasn't in God's thinking at all. But this woman was. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Amen. That's just all he wanted to see. He said, We believe that you are. I believe you're a prophet. Now, we know, we don't understand about the prophets now, because it's real late. We know that there's a Messiah coming, and when that Messiah comes, he's going to be the Word. <laughs> he's going to know the secrets of the heart. He's going to do the same thing that you did there. He said, you must be one of his prophets to forerun him or something. He said, I'm he. Amen. Well, what did he do? He was proving his Word, proving his position, proving what he was. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And God is the Word. No. All right. He calmed the winds and the waves to prove Isaiah's prophecy. He shall be called the mighty God, the everlasting Father. See? He also multiplied bread and fishes, this virgin-born son. What was it? To prove the Word. All Scripture has to be fulfilled. He proved the Word by saying, He was Jehovah. Made man, he was the beginning of the creation of God. God in creation. God was a little part of the creation here that God was living in himself. He was the beginning of that creation of God. From him begets many sons. No, he also multiplied the fishes. He is the word and the proof of the word. Now listen closely if you come down towards the end. That day, that I read about a few minutes ago now, when he come to the house of Jerias, he walked in when he got there. Now remember, Jairus was a, a priest, a borderline believer. He wanted to believe Jesus, but he hated to turn loose his church. Because it said, anybody who believes on him is going to be put out of the church. Now listen close to him. I close him. Give me very close attention. Watch this. I believe that Jesus knew that when he crossed the sea. Because he knew all things. And when he crossed the sea, stop down there. And here comes this little priest down. His girl got real sick. The doctors give her up, said she's laying at the point of death. Now, time come for action. Maybe that's to you this morning. Time has come for you to act. Maybe you're real sick. Maybe you're convinced that you're wrong. It might, God forces the issue. Time comes for action. Uh, closely. And he come, he didn't care what the rest of them said, right out publicly and come and fell down by Jesus' feet. What a step for, a, for an educated scholar to come to one that we don't have record of ever going to school. How a man come is supposed to be in all of theology, come to a man that was supposed to be a reprobate, a wild man, crazy man, out of his mind, didn't even have his right mind. Pardon the expression, but it's just a common crank of the day. Everybody thought him that. If we'd say today in a street expression, nut. As I preached the other day on the nut and the bolt, you know, thing. that's what he was to the public. Just a common everyday. He said, well, you're out of your mind. You're crazy. You're a madman. 
Now, here was a man who had all the scholarships coming to the one that was supposed to be out of his mind. <laughs> he was forced to it. Watch here now. Let's go to sting just a little bit, but it'll be good for you. Sometimes the shock wakes you up. Notice, he come and went into the side of this little dead girl that died probably hours before. And they'd done laid her out and put the embalming fluid on her and put her around the couch. That's the way they did in them days. Just packed them off and put them in a hole on a board. She laid out on the couch, the flowers around her, and all oh, that fine little pastor, little Jarius. I imagine he was a nice little pastor. Everybody loved him because, you see, I can prove that because he did in his heart believe Jesus. But he just couldn't hardly make the decision because he wouldn't have a check coming in every Saturday, every Monday morning, see? He just couldn't hardly make the, the decision. And another thing, the people, the great fine prestige that he had amongst the people, they said, you know what? Jarius has went fanatically. See? He went over there, that false prophet. That's exactly what he did. We're all them supposed to be signs. And they, that prophet of Galilee, you know, Jesus of Nazareth. We don't believe it now. It sounds sacrilegious, but that's the way it was then. See? And someday, as it is now, so it will be then. See? Same thing. Now, notice, he went over there, and he couldn't hardly do that, but the time come where he's forced to do it. He had to do it. And here he went and got Jesus right out before all of them and fell down at his feet and said, Master, Master. You know what that is? Rulership, ownership. Right. See, a lot of people want Jesus to be their Savior, but not their Lord. See, Lord is ruler. Mm -hmm. You say, Jesus, you save me. Let me stand right here, and that's all right, and I'll do my own business. Now, you don't get my business, but you can be my Savior, but not my Lord. He wants to be Lord. Amen. Okay. Then he's the Savior. But I said, Master, Savior, I am um, uh, my little girl, my only child. She's 12 years old. The doctors just give her up. No doubt, the priest might have said this, you know, They've all talked about you being a fanatic. But, you know, Master, I, I, I believe you. I believe, I know you have discernment. And the only thing I want you to say is just come lay your hands up on her and then tell me what to do. I'll do it. Oh, now you're getting somewhere. But I'll go. I'll go. They started on. After they'd been gone several hours, here come a man running with, as the custom was then, ashes on top. He said, so don't trouble a man. Your daughter died. She's already dead. They've already fixed her and laid her out. Oh, his little heart. Jesus turned him out and looked at him. He said, oh, oh, oh. He said, didn't I tell you? Ah, what are you done to You promised your eyes. Now, you've got to prove that. <laughs> Amen. I told you, just only believe and you'll see the glory of God. Amen. Now, you know what he was doing. He said he'd done nothing until the Father showed him first. St. John, John 5, 19. Amen. I only do what the Father shows me. So he showed him what was going to happen. So when he got into the house, stood up there beside that little cold, stiff farm. They'd never been sick for weeks. And her little pale body, no food. It went into her body and fevers and things, and she, she died. They had her all sprayed over with this embalming spice and stuff and laying there, you know, on the couch and things, fixing to wrap her up and put her in a grave. And they put, had their little ceremony of having the flowers around her. Jesus come on, everybody, oh, Jarius, your little girl's dead, oh, Father Jarius, oh, we're so sorry for you and everything. He said, oh, keep still. You make too much noise. He said, what all this tumult around here you're doing, you see, this tumult, you just, you're, you're hollering, you're screaming, the girl's not dead. She's asleep. Shh. <laughs> then what did they do? When they heard him say that she wasn't dead? They said they laughed him to scorn. In other words, they booed him. Boo, why you, why you false prophet? Why you deceiver of man? The girl's dead. The doctor said she was. We've embalmed her. We've laid her out. She's laying there. She's dead. He said, ha, ha, ha. Now, Jack, Josh, you've been talking about him. Now what about it? You know what he done? He said, all of you get out of here. <laughs> Around such unbelief like that, it can't work. Now, what had he said? He said, Jairus, if you will only believe, you'll see the glory of God. Amen. Now, that's his word. Amen. You've got to prove that. All right. Then when he got into the house where there's all crying, he said, she's asleep. That was contrary to science. <laughs> that was contrary to common sense. She was dead and bombed as soon as they died. They embalmed them right then, just as soon as the life went out of them. They poured that spices and stuff on them and wrapped them up and got them to go away. See, bury them. They buried just, uh, well, sometimes didn't even notify the people. You know, Ananias survived. They done buried Ananias. Uh, 
when a survivor, uh, and I'm a survivor, come in, you see. Don't talk about buried them, see. And as soon as they die, they pour that stuff on them and take them out there and put them away. See? So she's already ready to go in the grave, but they want to wait for Papa to see her before they put her away. And when he comes in, and her in that condition, and he said, she's just taking a nap. Well, they said, now, if that fellow isn't truly crazy. So now what did he do? He had already said she was asleep. He had to prove his word. He couldn't do it before that bunch. So he said, put them all out. And I see him look around his dry seat. You still believe? Yes, Lord. You and your wife, come here. Peter, James, and John, you come with me. They walked over there and called this word, Bithikurum, which means, little girl, rise up. And he proved his word. Amen. She was only asleep. Is that right? Amen. He proved here his word was right. Uh, regardless of their unbelief, he still proved his word was right by waking her up because he said she was asleep. Amen. She was asleep. He'll do the same someday to every true believer for his word promised to. Amen. They that are in Christ will God bring with him. See? They that are in Christ. What this little Jewish girl do? I just started bypassing the scripture here, but I, I'm going to keep it. I know it may be a little late. We'll get through the prayer line in a few minutes. I won't see you for another week, maybe, but let's wait a minute. Man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. Notice. Let me just push this in now to show you. Why did Jesus wake this little Hebrew maid up? Because she knows she wasn't dead. Predestination. Just same as he did Lazarus. See? Perhaps as many little maids died that same day. He never said a word to them. He knew this one had eternal life. Amen. See? He didn't wake the rest of them up. Look when he come out of Jericho and they say, Yeah, this guy here. No doubt they said, You wake up the dead. You tell me that you can raise the dead. We got a graveyard full of them up here. Come wake these up. See? He never even paid a bit of attention to them. Yeah. He never did it because he knew he was the word. Notice, she was only asleep. He knew the Father would come. Now, this little girl, see, he knew that that little Jewish maid was only asleep. See, the, the righteous does not die. Jesus came to redeem the righteous. And to redeem means to be brought back from where you once was. See, he cannot redeem the unbelievers, no matter how educated and how much doctors of degree they had. He could not redeem them because they were not redeemable. They had to go to their destination. But in his foreknowledge, he knew that Lazarus was coming out of the grave. He also knew this little girl had eternal life. So she was not dead. She was only asleep. And when our work is over on earth, if we don't live until he's coming, we cannot die. We're only asleep. He proved it here. He'll prove it again. Though the skin worms destroy his body, yet I'll wake in his likeness. He proves all of his words. All of his words. Just think of it. All of his words. And you were his word. He was the word. And you were part of his word. And that's the reason you're sent here to confirm your place in life. I, I don't think you got that. <laughs> he, he is the word. Now you get it. He was in the feet in Luther, in the thighs in Wesley, in the shoulders in Pentecost. <laughs> See what I mean? He is the head. You have a part that joins that together, this hour that we're living now. Not the feet part, not the thigh part, not the shoulder part, but the neck part. Is that right? That joins to the head. That's a part of the body. Those that are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Is that right? See, you become a part of that Word. You become a part of Him. And you take His name to recognize it. You're placed in there, baptized with His name, into His body, but one spirit, all, all baptized in one body, into here. Just exactly like the same position, He never changes His way. If, how many believe the early churches in Him? Let's see. How many believe it? How were they baptized? Amen. All right. See, He's unchangeable God. We prove that. We could stay here till midnight tonight proving that, and still on and on and on. See? Unchangeable. 
He, you are in Him and a part of Him because you were part of the thinking of Him before the foundation of the world. He called you. The Bible said that the beast upon the earth, that's the denominational Antichrist coming on the earth, forming the beast of Rome, which was the first denomination, and this uh, World Council of Churches forms an image into the beast. This is exactly what we just put in the book there the other day. Notice, it forms that, the, the Antichrist, and the Bible said, all whose names were not written on the Lamb's book of life, when? At the revival? Slain before the foundation of the world. Your name was put on there. This Antichrist will deceive you. Matthew 24, 24 says that, that the Antichrist would be so close like the real thing in the last days that it would deceive the very elected or predestinated. It's the same thing. Election and predestination is the same thing. God elected you or predestinated you before the foundation will deceive all whose names were not predestinated on the book of life. Daniel spoke of it, how the wise will be in that day and how the unwise and so forth. All right, so much, but he's keeping getting too, too far away. The clock's moving too fast for me. Notice. Now watch. He noticed after... Now watch what's taking place here. It, all he foreknew, he called. All he called, he has justified. All that he has justified, he hath glorified. Your journey's finished. You're living out your part. Grace is what God did for you. Works is what you do in appreciation. Proved by the same thing that he knowed all things, this virgin-born son, he knowed where there were some fish in the water that Peter and them had seen right over and it caught nothing. That proved his words. Is that right? He knowed all things. And when he got ready to pay his taxes, it showed that he owned all things. <laughs> he knew where fish was. had just enough coin in his mouth to pay for the... Somebody dropped out there and a fish just picked it up. And he said, Peter, go down and cast line in. Then he'd take out that fish and get that coin out of his mouth and go on and satisfy him, pay the taxes. Oh, yes. The foxes has dens and the birds of the air have nests. But he had the word, he was the word, and proved it so. He always proves his word. Same will he do it now. In every generation he proves the same. After the third day, after his death, burial, on the third day he rose up again to prove his word. Because the prophet said, I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption, neither will I leave his soul in hell. The third day before corruption could set in in 72 hours, he didn't go the complete three days because corruption does set in in 72 hours. See? So he didn't go the full time because the prophet said, see? the prophet said, I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. He proved his word. He healed the sick, the lame, to prove his word. And Isaiah and the rest of the prophet's hand. He sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to prove his word. You all get some inscription out of Joel 2.28. He said, It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, upon my hands, maids, and maids, servant, will I pour out of my spirit. Your young man shall see visions, your old man shall dream dreams, and so forth. He proved it by pouring out. Also, he had said before this time, in Luke 24, 49, if you want to put it down, he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Amen. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Amen. There it is. He did it. He sent the Spirit to continue to prove His Word. Amen. Amen. Watch what He said. Did He do it? Amen. All right. Mark 16, He said, Go ye to all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. How far? All the world. Who? Every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. He said in Mark 4, he said in John 14, 12, also he said, He that believeth on me not make believeth, but he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Amen. He had taken the same spirit that was in him to do that same work. Amen. Because what? The spirit was coming to manifest the promised word in the future. Amen. See, he made a provision for it. He knew these things would happen. Amen. Now, after 1,900 years, with the church ages past, and all the things that he prophesied, of Luther, Wesley, if we just went through and seen it, draw it out and the moon come down and draw it out and the Lord draw it on the board here for us and showed it and come down himself and confirmed it to be right. After 1,900 years, and we're at the end of the Lady Osea church age, he promised in Luke 17:30 that this same Son of Man he promised it. 
would be revealed in the days like it was in Sodom upon the earth. Did he do it? Amen. Does it have to come to pass? Amen. It's impossible. I remember he come in three names. The Son of Man, a prophet. The Son of God, the Spirit. The Son of David for the millennium. But in between this conjunction, according to his own words, in the day when the Son of Man shall be revealed. Reveal himself. As what? Not Son of God, Son of Man will reveal himself in a different way. Now, what does that make? Malachi 4 exactly right. See? The Son of Man will reveal himself not in a whole big denominations and things that we've had through the ages, but he would manifest himself as Son of Man again to make manifest Malachi 4. And in that day I will send to you Elijah the prophet, and he shall turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the apostolic fathers away from all this denominationalism, and come back to the original word again to draw out that last day bride tree that he promised in the evening time it shall be light. Not through the misty day it shall be light. It'll be a day can't be called day nor night. See, it's making up the body. But the same head that was here in the east is here in the west again. There shall be light in the evening time. Oh, my. I feel like singing a song. It shall be light about the evening time. The path of glory you will surely find. In the waterway is the light today, buried in his precious name. Young and old, repent of all your sins, then the Holy Ghost will surely enter in. The evening lights have come. It's being known and made a fact that God and Christ are one. And the Son of Man is revealing himself in the same power that he was. Not down through the church age, through justification, sanctification, all these things here. But the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? The Word. Amen. And the Word is quicker than a powerful and a two-edged sword and deserves the thoughts that's in the heart. Amen. What do you have to do? He has to prove that Word. What would you do? Notice of it when we see it happening. Look at it in the same form that he was here in the beginning. The pillar of fire. My. Proving it. He's Hebrews 13, 8. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was it? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. That was Christ. That was in the wilderness of Moses. How many knows the Bible said that? Yeah. Yesterday. That was Christ when Paul was speaking here today. You believe that? In the New Testament. Then the Son of Man, same Christ, in the last day. See? All right. Notice. Also, John 14, 12. He said, The works that I do shall you do all these other scriptures. What does he do? He's here now proving not Luther's age, not Wesley age, not Pentecostal age, not Baptist age, not Presbyterian age. We went right down through it and proved it by history in the Bible. But what? The age of the Son of Man being revealed. To bring these things in to fulfill the word when all must be fulfilled. See? We see it and it's true. And think by the same methods he did in the first place is not only confirmed among us, but it's confirmed by science. They have to admit it's right. George J. Lacey, the head of the FBI for fingerprinting documents, said the light struck the lens. I call it psychology myself, but said, Mr. Branham, this camera won't take psychology. <laughs> it's there. What is it? A testimony that long years ago when a, that Pillar of fire was standing there in that bush like a whirlwind. Speaking to me, he said, don't you never smoke or drink? There's a work for you to do when you get older. The people said, that boy's going to have his mind. Mother wanted to call a doctor. I was nervous. Well, what was it? He settled right down here at the bottom of that river, at the Ohio River. It said that John the Baptist was sent. To get a people ready for the word to be made manifest, so will your message. How Dr. Davis and them call me out of my mind, want to turn me out of the church. Because I disagree with my women preachers and all those things was unscriptural. He said, and you say you're going to preach and cause a revival to strike the world? I said, not me, but he said so. He said, Billy, you had a nightmare. I said, I'll give up my card right now. I'm no more of him. He said it, I believe it. And he's proved it. <laughs> That's the good word. He's proved it. Proved his word by the word. For he is the Word. Amen. See? And the Word does what? Knows the secret of the heart. Is that right? All right. Proves it. Hebrews 13, 8. And 
He will have a bride church ready in the last day. How is he going to do it, Brother Bram? I don't know, but he said he would. He'll prove it. A called out from all the others. That's right. The speckled bird. <laughs> the speckled by his blood. Hmm? Called out all the rest of the flocks against her. She's despised and rejected. But the speckled bird. Now, I don't care how much the author wanted to disagree with that. He's mistaken. Remember. What did to the bird, the speckled bird was? they taken two of them. One was killed, the mate was poured up on the other bird, and it was for cleansing of leprosy, and the specks of blood, it cried, Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. And that was our mate, Jesus Christ, that was killed, and his blood's upon us, crying, Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. All the rest of earth, I'm glad my name's on her book. <laughs> Not here on earth, but up there. Not on a goat skin, but on a lamb skin. That's right. There will be a resurrection of the dead. He'll confirm it. That's right. He'll prove it. There'll be a rapture of the church. How's it going to be? I don't know, but he'll prove it. His word's true. There'll be a millennium. He'll prove it. It's his word. There'll be a new heavens and a new earth. He'll prove it because his word said so. And only the righteous will be there. He'll prove it too. That's right. Only the ones that's been made part of this word. See? will be their part and their position in this Word for their age will be the only one who will be there. Because that's just what it is. He is the Word. And what is a woman? The image of a man. And what is, what is the church? The image of the Word. See? Exactly, see? So he'll be there. Just as I am. Only the true believers in his Word know this and can believe it, and God helps them to prove it. That's right. That it is true. Do you now believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? If so, reach out by faith and touch his garment, because he's passing this way. Hallelujah. He will prove he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. Matthew. And he is a high priest, according to Hebrews, um, the book of Hebrews, fourth chapter, in the 15th verse. He is the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Do you believe that? Reach out and touch the Lord. He's ever-present. Lo, I am with you always. Look down through the ages. Prove all things. Hold fast to that what's good. Now, if you belong to a church that don't believe it, he's the same yesterday and ever, the same in every way, get away from him. Prove it. Now, if we say he's raised from the dead. I didn't say it. The Word here said it. They said he raised from the dead. He says he's the same yesterday and forever. You believe that? Amen. He promised these things to happen in the last day that the same Son of Man would be made manifest. Now remember, that was not Jesus talking to Abraham there that could discern the thoughts of Sarah's mind behind him. That was not Jesus. He had not yet been born. But it was a man in human flesh that Abraham called Elohim the great Almighty. Showing, and Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom. Now watch close. In the days of Sodom. So will it be at the coming of the Son of Man when the Son of Man is being revealed. Not no more as a church. See? Not no more the bride's called. See? In that day, the Son of Man will be revealed. What? To join the church to the head. Unite the marriage of the bride. The bridegroom call will come right through this when the Son of Man will come down and come in human flesh to unite the two together. The church has to be the Word. He is the Word. And the two unites together. And to do that, it'll take the manifestation of the revealing of the Son of Man. Amen. Not a clergyman. I don't know. Do you see what I mean? See? It's Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will come down in human flesh among us. And will make his word so real that it will unite the church and him as one. Amen. The bride. And then she'll go home to the wedding supper. Amen. Amen. She's already united. See? Amen. We go to the wedding supper, not to the marriage. <laughs> Feel your flesh, uh, uh, self upon the flesh of mighty man, because the marriage of the Lamb has come. But the rapture is going to the wedding supper. When the Word here unites with the person, and they too become one. And now what does it do then? It manifests the Son of Man again. Not the church theologians, the Son of Man. 
the Word in the church becomes one. Amen. Whatever the Son of Man done, he was the Word. The church says the same thing. Amen. How did he prove himself through the ages, through the prophets, which could speak the Word, know the thought? That's how he was knowing that promise that the church age come through with not even night or day, but in the evening time, when the Son of Man would be revealed, it would come again. Amen. It shall be light at the evening time. Amen. See? What does he do? Prove his word. Now look back. Did he come as a virgin? Did he come as he said to the virgin, rather? Did he come just exactly the way he said? Watch through that. He proved his word regardless of how many atheists, infidels, indifference. He still come right on and proved his word. Amen. Here we are. Come through this age of all churches and things. Got away like they did from Malachi up to the coming of Christ. All the prophets and things have ceased and they've got into dignitaries and so forth. But just exactly, look what kind of a character he sent. Just exactly the Elijah, a hater of immoral women and put on a lot of paint powders and makeups and all that stuff there and clergymen. He slayed them right and left, coming out of the wilderness, pulling those strings with another and said, Messiah's on the road. Amen. I don't know him when he come, I'll introduce him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't you begin to think you belong to this or that. Just the same as Elijah did. And in the last days it shall come to pass. Amen. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come that I will send to you. Hmm? Before that great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. I will send to you Elijah the prophet and he will restore the faith of the children back to the fathers. And watch. The faith of the fathers to the children, the Jews. They, uh, their promise of the scripture, the Gentiles from where they fell from. Look at that duel just perfectly, exactly. And here we see it. God proving his word. Amen. We believe. Let us bow our heads a moment. Dear God, who brought again our Lord Jesus from the dead to prove your word. And he's alive today, proves your word. Lo, I am with you always, even to the consummation. Prove his word. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. But when forever, maybe my, my stumble with some of them. I didn't stop to explain it, Lord. But forever they know is just a, a space of time. And now after this age, there won't be no more forever. It'll be eternity. So he was the same God that was in Moses and in the prophets. Then he come after a space of time and manifested himself as the God prophet. And then we had a space of time and he comes again. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We think of this Solomon in that great millennium of the Jews that when no nations dared to touch him and that great gift of God was in the prophet till he made known to the queen all of her secrets of her heart. Nothing was withheld. The great age showing and typing that there was a great age coming. And now, Father, that was you, not Solomon. That was you in Jesus or he said, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He was the beginning of the creation. His body was the redeemed creation. And now, through the ages, the church lost its first love. And now in the last days, you promised to call a little minority, the little flock at the last days. Father, our hearts are jumping and my heart's pounding when I think of that and know that your words are true. None of them can fail. Let these people today understand that and let the sinner seek you at this hour before the gates close and there will be no more time. Let the bride, as she starts getting out of step from this and that, may she come back into the step as the vision showed a few weeks ago. I pray thee, Father, to bless now and heal the sick. Here are claws laying here, handkerchiefs from coming from different parts. And now in the scripture, it said it was taken claws and aprons, handkerchiefs from the body of Paul, and they went to the sick, and God healed them. Now we know that we're not St. Paul, but we know that it wasn't St. Paul. It was a people's faith in him being your servant. Lord, these people wouldn't drive these hundreds of miles if you didn't believe. Reward their faith, Lord. As I not anoint the handkerchief. Paul never anointed him. He took from his body. As I hold these handkerchiefs, Lord, not that my body, well, it's no good, 
but it is your redeemed property. So I pray, God, that you'll honor their faith. May each one of them be healed for the kingdom of God's sake. Now, Lord, a lengthy message, not meaning it to be over a few minutes, but it's passed into two hours or more. Now, let the sick be healed, Lord. Let the people see that you're here. That I haven't just said this in myself. It's you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, just about ten minutes. I don't know. Did you get me here? Oh, okay. uh, Billy uh, said he'd give out some. I asked him to do it this morning. And I just come in a few minutes to go back there, and I didn't have a chance to ask him because I was talking to Brother Ben or them around there. I didn't get a chance to ask him. He just told me to give out prayer cards. Prayer card, a B, 100, uh, one, two, hundred, a B, well, let's, uh, a B, prayer card number one, B, who's got B, can you, if you can stand up, raise your hand, if you can walk, some woman in the back, or right, B number one, number two, three, four, five, come this way, and I'm going to ask these little children if they would just come right around behind the platform and sit down here, now, all right, now, I tell you, send them, a, uh, you go right through that aisle there, you people from one to five, go right through that way. And come right down, let the ones that's in the aisle there, if they can, uh, come right back around here towards their seat. Now, the little children are sitting here, come right around behind the platform here. I want them to walk right by here, the people, so I can pray for them. Now, let's see now. Let's see now. What did I call? One to five. Wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five. One. Everybody's got a prayer card there. One to five. Raise up your hands if they're all up on their feet. There's one, two, three, four. I like one. One, two, three, four, five, and B. Are you all one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four. Where's five at? Be, across, five. Go back that way, lady. Uh, all right, sir. Go around that way. That's it. Go right around. Come back. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? Be it prayer card six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, we do this and you don't get any disturbance then. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I've got... I think, do you have a card, sir, standing up here? Seven. All right, go right over there. You go right with them. I only got two, I think, there. All right, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Prayer card, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've only got two. Here's, you got one, sir. Three. Oh, there they are. Uh, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now, that'd be one, two, three, four, uh, five. All right. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, all right, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 1, 2, 3, go around that way, sir, and go right around following that. 25. Uh, 25. Uh, help him there. Uh, let him go out through either way he wants to. Here you are, brother, right here. They open the way here for you. The people's open your way here. Somebody help him right along there if you can. Let get right around and get in the line. Huh? I tell you, set him down right there, and when his number's called, put him right up there. See, when he comes in a number, put him right in the line. All right, I think that's just about as many could, could go now. Now, how many here that does not have a prayer card, and you're confident, you're, you're absolutely sure that God can heal the sick? Raise up your hand. Do you believe it? How many of you here is from that knows that I know nothing about you? Don't know your diseases. These, these people here, now my tabernacle, to when you strangers, there hardly is anybody. I can see that these ministers just now and then I see a person I recognize. I'm not here enough, see? And there are just people that come in from everywhere. How many in here, let me prove it to you. How many here knows I know nothing of you? Raise up your hand. That's your hand before God, you see. I know nothing of them. Now, I don't know that I might get somebody to call in a prayer line like this that I did know. But I wouldn't know what they were here for, see. I wouldn't know what they were here for. Now, what I'm trying to do is to get you to see this. Now, watch. The works that I do shall you do also. You believe that? Amen. You believe he approved that word? Amen. Yeah. All right. Did he say he would reveal himself as son of man at the end of the church age? How many? Amen. And the world would look be in the shape of Sodom and Gomorrah. You believe that? Now, Billy, why don't you just let him come right by here? You got, all right. Well, okay. Right. At, the, at the end of the age, he would reveal himself. Now look, do you realize that the, here's a total impossibility? Now, here's people stand this line that I've never seen in my life. 
There's people sitting out there that I never seen. But remember, Hebrews 4.15, I believe it is, that said that he's a high priest now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that true? Now, if he is the high priest, then he is Hebrews 13.8 then, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? Now, how would he reveal himself? As I told you, he always speaks to his prophets. He always sends a, 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 a message before judgment. Now, all the things, he never changes his way. He decided in the Garden of Eden how he would save man. He was shed blood of an innocent one. He's never changed it. We try to change it through education, through towers of Babel, through great cities and everything like that. We try to change it, but it don't work. We try to change it by educating the world to him. We try to change it by denominational people. It never worked. Only one place man can meet to worship under the blood. Your denominations will split you up, but under the blood you're the same. He never changes. Now, if he is the unchangeable high priest and the same yesterday and forever, then he's got to keep that word. Amen. Amen. Not because we said he did, because he said he would. Now, now, if he will do that, now just stop a minute. Think. Now, how many of you in this prayer line know that I know not one thing about you? Your sickness, now raise up your hand. You know what I... How many in that prayer line knows I don't even know you? Raise up your hand. Look in the audience, see. Now, you out there, you don't have to be here. You just touch his garment. You just speak. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. Now, you say, I believe that. And I, I believe that, that you can reveal to Brother Branham because, now, not because it's Brother Branham. He's just an ordinary man. And probably, if the rapture come this morning, you think about the rapture. If the rapture come this morning, I say this in humility. There's no doubt that half of this congregation, if we went according to, to degrees, according to where we should be, half of you go before me. Right? I'm not... Look at the responsibility I got and how, how loosely I carry it. I'm an unprofitable servant to Christ. To know what I know about him and then live the way I do, not immoral, not in clean, nothing like that. God knows that truth, see. I try to live right, but... I, I just look like I can't get the thing to go over. Maybe it had been somebody else, maybe highly educated or something. They could have got it to the people. But then it comes to think, it's not all the people's going to get it anyhow. He knows what he's going to do. So I just commit myself to him and say, Lord, I'm in your hands. Do with me as you see fit. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, now I believe I know this woman. I can't think of who she is, but I know her, uh, I know her somehow. But I've seen her face. But I, I don't know who she is right at this time. But I, I, I know her. So I, I, don't you know me? I, I thought, I looked at her face, I thought I knew her. But I can't call her who she is. But I, I believe she, don't your husband, ain't she the woman that works at the, her husband works at 777 or 711 or something like that down in New Orleans? Um, Mrs. Egan. That's right. Now, are you been here to come to church? Roy? Is that the one we went to one day on, is that, is that the one up on the mountain? I say, her sister. That was, well, that, that's how, I, see. I remember Roy and I were driving along. He mentioned that name and the Lord sent me up there and healed the woman right there. And uh, I just remember. Now, but to know what's wrong with you, I have no idea. You know that. But if the Lord Jesus can tell her something that she's done, or maybe she's, she's got some financial trouble. Maybe her and her husband got some trouble. Maybe her and her children, maybe one of her children, if she's got children, I don't know. But if she has, maybe some of her children are, are running out. Maybe she's standing here to know something about that. I don't know. I have no way of knowing. I, I, I can't tell you. But he knows. See? So you see, the, listen, now catch this real close. I've never said this in the audience before, but I feel led to say it now. What is a word is a thought expressed. Now, how can I express her thought? Or how can I express to her what her thought is? It'll have to be some other thought that's presented and she can't do it. So I have to express his thought. And if it's right, if it's God's thought, it'll be right. Amen. If it isn't God's thought, then it won't be right. She'll know it. You'll know it. All in a way. See, there's just no way around it. It's either got to be God or not God. 
His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Now, you believe that. Everybody. And how many is going to believe? Well, maybe you've never seen one of the meetings before, but you're going to believe if God does that. And then you out there now, you uh, won't be in the prayer line. You, you pray too. See? Or either if you're coming in the prayer, I don't care who you are, you just pray. Lord Jesus, now I've took lots of time, but it's your service, Lord. Now I've done all that humanly I can do, but thou art God. Now the rest is in your hands, Father. Let it be known that you're God and your word is true. Prove your word, Lord, of this last day when the Son of Man will be revealed. How did he make himself known? He was the word. What is the word? A discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He perceived their thoughts. Told Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, the woman at the well, all the rest there, that when they would come, no little girl was asleep, not dead. I pray, God, that you'll use our humble tabernacles today of this earthly dwelling, that you might make yourself known. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now to heal, I cannot, you know. <laughs> what is the gift, Brother Branham? Something that you take and, you know, it's something you know how to get yourself out of the way. See, as long as you're there, it'll never work. William Branham is the greatest enemy I got. See? But when I get him out of the way, see, then Jesus Christ can use the body. See, see now, I come to that woman. Now what? Now say, if she, if she was sick, Here's a lady here who's got her limb laying up on a, on a chair. Now, if, I, if Jesus is here and go down and lay his hands up on that woman, that limb would get well. No doubt about that. But you see, we are human beings with dirty hands. His hands is holy. God vindicated him. He was the Word. You believe that? Amen. Sure. He had no doubt. He lay his hands up on her and said, Daughter, be well. She'd get well. But then he commissioned us to do the same thing. Amen. I think he's clearly identified it. Now, what if he would give me a vision and tell this woman something to do? That what? I believe that if I lay my hands up her, she'd get well. You believe that? Amen. But what if he didn't give the vision? What would the vision do? Only give me faith. Transmitting my faith, the unseen power of God. See? Now, if you, every one of you die right this minute, I, you never see your, you leave your body. All your mental faculties, all that you are, would leave, but you never see it go. See, it'd be an un the force that makes me move my hands. That's a force, isn't it? The force that can make me think. The force that makes me preach. The force that makes me live, act. That same force that can motivate this body would leave it, and you wouldn't see the force leave. It's an unseen force. So is faith. Don't miss this. Faith. And Jesus said, they shall lay hands on the sick. Now. See, if I went and had a vision, laid hands on her, I believe that she's going to get well because I saw the vision. My confidence is in the vision. But what about the Word? Lay hands on her with the same faith. The vision's only given to motivate my faith and your faith. With the same faith without the vision, it'll work just the same. Some people are given great faith. Some don't have that kind of faith. They're given visions to give them that faith. See? Now, see, still be the same dirty hands. Be the same person. We're just laying hands up on them. Now, let the Holy Spirit confirm His presence. Amen. Confirm His Word that He promised. Now, I forgot what your name was. What is your name now? Egan. Well, He could have told me that if He wanted to. But I just said, I, I know, I know you. Now, you just come right here just a minute, a little closer. There's people standing there praying. See? I, now, Miss Egan, if I... If I be the servant of Christ, and I have preached the word, which I believe to be the truth. You believe that? You believe that. Now, if you have a need of something, I cannot give it to you because I don't have it to give. Unless it, uh, maybe a little money or something, or uh, uh, I could go talk to your husband or children or loved ones or something. I could. But if you need a healing, I couldn't give it to you. That's already purchased. But through a gift. I can make you recognize, if you have faith, that that's already purchased. Because the one who purchased it, the only one you could have faith in is the Son of God. The purchaser is standing here. Is that right? The purchaser is here. Now, you know me as a brother, a minister. Now, I know you as a sister. 
we know him as God. Now, if that unseen person, by a gift that I have to make myself get out of the way, can tell me, tell you through me, my lips, see, now when I'm praying, God don't see me. He just hears my voice through the blood of Jesus. See? He don't see me, he hears my voice. And that blood there is to represent what I ask. See? Now he hears my voice, but he sees only the blood. See? He don't see me, so I can't be dirty when I'm under the blood. The blood cleanses me. See? He's the bumper between me and God. And promise, ask the Father anything, I'll do it. Do you believe that to be true? Yes. Now if everybody looks like, can you see that, what's happening? Amen. Look coming in here. A light, amber, moving right around. Now she couldn't hide it if she had to. No, no. You're here from the results of something that's happened to you. You've had pneumonia. <laughs> and you've been in the hospital. You've been in an oxygen tent. And you're suffering from the results of it. You're going to be well. Jesus Christ is going to be well. Oh, my God. I won't believe it. Sister, I'm going to lay my hands up in Jesus' name. God bless you. It's going to be happy. I don't doubt it at all. How do you do, sir? If I, I don't believe I know you, we're strangers. Now, here's a woman that I don't know. I don't know you. I have no way of knowing you. But do you believe that God could reveal to me by his word, see, because he promised it. You believe he could tell me something about you? And that would make you accept it. Is that right? Knowing that it wouldn't be me, your brother. It would be he, your savior. You believe that? You're pending an operation. You've been told you have to have an operation. You believe he could tell me what the operation is for? It's in the stomach and in the bowels. That is exactly right. You want to escape it. You believe now with this spirit here, the spirit of Christ, all around us and standing up on me. You know something had to tell you because I don't know you. You believe a laying hands that would transmit the faith that I believe in with you with your faith and before God our Father you'd be healed. And Lord Jesus, I obey your command. When you said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Let our sister be made well for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. Go on, don't just forget about it. See, go on, believe it with all your heart. Amen. How do you do? I say that just to contact your spirit, lady. It's like Jesus did to well said, bring me a drink. Now I believe, I don't believe I've ever seen you. I believe you're a stranger to me. Is that right? That's right. Raise up your hand so the audience can see. I don't know the lady. Uh, this is genuine healing. It's genuine faith. Genuine scripture. The unadulterated Word of God made manifest and proved that He's not dead. He's alive forevermore. And he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also. And this believer will lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Well, how can you doubt it? Now, he knows who would and who would not. I don't. That's up to him. But now, if this lady be a stranger, I don't know her, never seen her in my life. She's a young woman, much younger than, than me, but I, I have never seen her. And she's here for some purpose. You believe that these things that I've taught in the Bible, lady, to be the truth? You believe they are the truth? And you accept it, not because I said it, because God said it. You believe we're living in the last days when the Son of Man was to be manifested. That would be all the word that's gathered up through Luther, Wesley, Baptists, and all that in the Pentecostal, all gathered up to the revelation of what it's all been. The seventh angel was to open the sixth seal mystery. It's all to be gathered up. And the Son of Man, his fullness of time, has come to the fullness of his word to manifest the fullness of his body. Amen. That's the word. That's the spoken word made manifest by the word reveal the word. Now, if God can tell me what your trouble are, he is, brother. He made uh, you. He knows all about you. And if he can reveal it, you look like a healthy person. But if he can reveal it to me, you know whether it's the truth or not. Will you accept it? I look right at you. Of course you're wearing glasses. You have had to wear them. That really isn't what you're here for. I can see that it moves right back, see? Now, 
We are here because of blood clot. <laughs> you, you believe you can tell me where they're at? Your leg. You believe that to be God doing that? You believe God can tell me more about you? Huh? You thought it's your stranger, and I just thought, well, wait, talk to you a minute. You believe he can, you believe he can tell me uh, where you're from? You're from Gary, Indiana. You believe he can tell me who you are? Miss Ogden. It's true. Now you go back home and get well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How do you do? We are strangers to each other, too. I don't know you. But you believe that the Lord Jesus can reveal to me your trouble? You know it. Thank you, sister. That's very fine. All right? Being that you know that, then, that hernia will get all right. And you got Thank you, Jesus. And you got a, a growth in your side. Thank you, That's right, isn't it? You know when you tell you what side it's in? It's in your right side. Thank That's you, exactly Lord. right. Now go on your road and believe it. Thank you, you believe? Absolutely, it's the truth. You believe that the Son of God, Son of Man, has come down through the ages as He promised? But just, you believe the world is in a Sodom condition, ready to be destroyed by the fire like Sodom was? Sodomites were Gentiles, remember. But down in there in Sodom was some righteous people. God sent a messenger to call them out. Some of them come, some didn't. Most of them stayed in. But there was a group sitting up on the mountain, Abraham. And there was a messenger who came to him to show him what was going to happen. He wasn't going to be in it anyhow. But then the world is in that same condition today. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Son of Man, Son of David, and he come to manifest himself. I just noticed there's something happening to the woman. She's here for a great cause. She isn't here for sickness. You know what she wants to ask me? Lay hands on her she receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? Raise your hand up if that's right. She has a great thing. Dear Heavenly Father, give this child of yours the desire of her heart. May she receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, so shall she receive it. You believe? What about you out there? Do you believe too? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Look very sincere about that. You believe that blood clot can leave too? Something right there with the green looking shirt on? Raise up your hand if you believe it'll leave. It will. Hallelujah. I've never seen a man in my life. Hallelujah. Total, absolute stranger to me. I've never seen him. You believe it? The rest of you audience? Why don't you see it's got to be him? Cancer is no bad thing for God to heal. You can make it well, can't you? You believe you will? All right, then go to receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Just believe with all your heart. Hi, honey. You know, Jesus shed his blood that, that your blood could be right. Do you believe that? Dear God, I bless this child. May she have a blood transfusion from Calvary. Take all the sugar away, Lord. And let her be well in Jesus' name. How do you do? <laughs> you believe you can heal that back and make it well? I know. Believe it. Have faith. Well, just lay hands on you so you. God bless you. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You believe? He made food to eat. He made a stomach to digest it. 
And when something gets wrong in that stomach, he's the healer of it. You believe that? All right. That's all you have to know. Uh, leave it all your heart. Bitch, you have the same thing. Just go on. Leave it all your heart, too. It's okay. Bring the lady on. How do you do? Pretty little girl. She's awful little to have female trouble. You believe Jesus will make you well of that? Dear God, this little girl, I curse this enemy. Why, in the presence of Jesus Christ, may it leave her, may she be well. In Jesus' name, amen. You believe? Now, dark shadow moves up. Death. But cancer is not... God can heal cancer and make well. you believe that? With all your, you believe he's going to make you well of it? In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse this cursed thing. Under that cross fishes. May the cross of Christ take it away. Make it go in Jesus' name. Hold down. If thou canst believe all things are possible, how do you do? Of course, your arthritis will go and you'll be made well if you believe. You believe that? You believe so you can walk around and you'll be all right? The Lord bless this dear sister and make her well in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Jesus. You believe the same thing can happen to you? I believe it has. You go, if you believe it's your heel right now, I believe it's gone from you myself. In the name of Jesus Christ, let our brother go and be normally and well for the glory of God. Amen. Finally happened. You is sitting there crying. You believe them hemorrhoids are going to leave you? <laughs> you stayed right here for the last half hour, look like right before me. You stand right beside this man. You've been believing, haven't you? You believe with all your heart, you go back down to Texas and be well. <laughs> i never seen a man in my life. Did you know back to get well and you're going to be ready? Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, touch the little thing and heal it in Jesus Christ's name. <laughs> now that spirit draws near, it's all over the building. Hard to tell where that means. Nervous. Let me show you something. How many is nervous out there? Raise your hand. It's hard to say which is which. But God knows all about it. All your desires, you've tried all hard <laughs> overcoming. Many things in life you try to give up and you want to serve God with it, everything it needs. Looks like it's always been something to hold you back. You believe it's going to happen right now this morning, you're going to be made free from these things. Would you believe it? Our Heavenly Father, so that these others might see the thou art the Christ, the Son of God, heal this dear woman standing here, Father. Quieten her. We all know what she suffers for. And we pray that you'll make her well. As I lay my hands on her with all the faith, I too have an attack right now. Weary, Satan, overworked, nerves going bad. Leave her, Satan. I lay my hands up on her with all the faith that I got. Right. Leave her in Jesus' name. I live in Don't believe in you. That's what you want me to do. <laughs> I don't know you. You're a stranger to me. <clears throat> that hurt you. If you believe it'll get well, then another thing, you got arthritis. If you believe, you'll be well. Your back troubles left you. Don't believe me. You believe with all your heart? How many? Is that all of them in the line? Is any of us rest the line? You all? Pass right by here so I can lay your hands up on the stage. Let's bow our heads just a minute. It's after one o'clock. Dear God, I lay hands up on my sister while the anointing of the Holy Ghost is here. Make her well. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, I lay hands upon my sister. Steve? 
Oh, you didn't get prayed for, brother. Brother, you know what he did? He's an old deer hunter. He said he had a rifle he'd always hunted deer with, that he was too old now to go hunting. You want to bring the rifle and give it to me. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love him. Don't forget your little question. Later. If you don't get it today, bring it Wednesday or Sunday. Call he her love me and pray. Would you all pray line? Ovation on Calvary. Think how sweet he is to us now. Just think. He proves his word. I see. If I could heal, it would be different. See? But he's the one that's already done it. See? So he just proves his presence here. I am he that was dead and alive forevermore. There's no man ever like him. He was a man all to himself. He was God. There was never a man that lived like he lived. There was never a man born like he was born. There was never a man that could do what like he did. There was never a man that died like he died. There was never a man that raised from the dead like he did. Or I say, wait a minute, Brother Bram, others is raised from the dead. Yeah, but they died again, but he's alive forevermore. See? Never a man raised like he did. He rose from the dead forevermore. Mm -hmm. Let's just sing it to him now. Oh, I love him. I love him. Because me and for just my salvation on Calvary. Let's just bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I love this people. And I just hold them, Lord. It wasn't my intention of doing this. But you hear many of them with little children waiting. They're hungry. They don't understand. But they just sit right here because they know that man cannot live only by the Word of God. And then when the Word is being spoken and then made known, made manifest, proven, then they know it can only be you. I pray for each one. Bless them, Father. May they be healthy and strong for the journey that lays before us. Bless them through the week. And if it so be your will, Lord, that we can meet here again next Sunday, next Sabbath, to come here and worship, I pray, God, that you'll strengthen them. Some of them may not. Some will have to go to their homes in different parts of the country, maybe across the sea or out of the states. We pray that you'll be with them and help them. May we meet at Jesus' feet someday. Grant it, Father. Help us now as we love one another and believe in you and hoping someday that the tie that binds our hearts together now will be the eternal card that let us live in that city that's four square for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Take the name of Jesus with you, a child of... Now shake hands with one another. Oh, it will join. Turn around, shake hands with somebody. Say, I'm happy to be here with you this morning. Take it everywhere you go. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. God bless you, then. Oh, power and joy of heaven. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. Oh, power and joy of heaven. Now, listen to this now. Now, sing it. Take 
the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. Now listen close. When temptations around you gather, what do? Breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, precious name. Oh, how sweet. Oh, power and joy. Ah, heaven, precious name. 